<laughs> well, it was a great start to the weekend, right, guys? Because Guns N' Roses canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Guns N' Roses. Yeah. People, you would have thought. I, I don't even know. Like everybody was like, I, I'm sorry. I didn't care that it canceled. In fact, I was happy to have a Saturday to myself where I didn't have to do anything. Okay. Okay. You would have. Everybody was like, oh, I just can't believe this. They gave us like 24 hours notice. Okay. Trust tree. Trust Go. tree. Yeah. Trust tree. Yes. Okay. I was very much looking forward to it. Sure. I was more looking forward to it because I was bringing my kid. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Great. Okay. I was more looking forward to it because my kid was looking forward to it and he was bringing a buddy. Okay. I get that. And I was going to experience one of my favorite bands of all time when I was his age with him. Great. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Let me ask you this. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. You had 24 hours to deal with that grief. Were you okay? Oh, Saturday night I was great. Okay. I was going to say, <laughs> like, it, I, I saw comments online of be, people being like, what about the people that were traveling from far away to come see yeah, this it show? it sucks. It sucks. You had 24 hours. Happens. You could cancel your reservation. You could get... What about the people that flew in? Nobody flew in, okay? <laughs> Nobody was flying in for this. What about the people that flew in? No. I tell you what, So though. enjoy your... Couple days in St. Louis. They I don't got know. the word out pretty. The arch. They got the word out pretty well because I was uh, what was it Saturday morning or something? Whenever it was that I saw the announcement, I go I auto. Oh, you saw it Saturday morning? Well, listen, I don't know when it was, but whenever it was, Friday. I was last because I, I I audibly went, oh my goodness, they canceled the Guns and Roses, <laughs> and my wife, who does not care about Guns and Roses, does not know about any of this, goes. Where you been? That's old news. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well, they got the word yeah. out. That's, okay, so, I, good so I had a free Saturday night. I was upset for, uh, you know, maybe a couple hours on Friday. I'll be honest with you. Oh, <laughs> head down. Right. Oh, sulking. Ah. <laughs> 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 How am I going to break it to the kid? He's going to, he's, he's at school right now. Should right. I text him? Should I text him? Should I text him? Should I wait till he gets home? What should I do? The boy walks through the door. Boy, it's a bad news. Want to sit down? Is mom okay? <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Oh my God. Hmm. <laughs> she's fine. Sit down. Son, Guns N' Roses was canceled. <gasps> He goes, ah, cool, man. I'm going to go, uh, uh, it's uh, Endless uh, Boneless Wings at Applebee's with my buddies. Yeah, go with Ian to Endless Boneless uh, Wings. That's great. Endless Boneless Wings at Applebee's. It's back. Oh, okay. Here's how savage I am, okay? First of all, the person I was in the suite with, Chris Frank, who is down the hall, who is the biggest Guns N' Roses fan of all time. Truly. Truly. He, we had a mass group on Facebook, okay? So the news breaks. He comes forward. He's devastated. All right. You know, we had heard the news kind of inside, whatever. I'm fine. Like, okay, cool. I decide I'm not making any plans on Saturday. I'm using this as the music god saying, hey, girl. Take a break. Mm. Take a break, honey, pie. You need to just have a bonfire at your house with nobody around. And uh, that's what we did. That you did? Nice. Well, <laughs> our buddy Chris Frank down the hallway. No, over Casey is the is the biggest Guns N' Roses fan you would ever know. Um, I was a couple years ago. Guns N' Roses, they uh, they sold this uh, vault. It was like the Guns N' Roses vault. Mm -hmm. It was like over a thousand dollars, and it had like <laughs> records and rarities and cassette tapes, and and it came in a cool like safe. Yeah, it came in a safe. And I said, what idiot would buy this? <laughs> <laughs> and he brought his in on Friday. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now you're I jealous. actually said on the radio, what moron would buy this? This is just a money play. Oh, man. And he showed me his Guns N' Roses vault. Mm. And once that, that show was, uh, well, they're not even calling it canceled. They're calling it postponed. Postponed. And it could be October. It could be next summer. What I hear, it's going to be next summer. As long as they don't rage against the machine, us, you know. What That's I'm the word is. It's gonna be. It's gonna be next summer. Um, I texted him and I said, "Are you okay?" <laughs> like I wanted to do like a wellness check on our buddy 
our seven foot tall buddy down the hallway, Chris yeah. Frank, and he was okay. Good. But uh, Kevin Johnson writes, uh, Guns N' Roses has postponed its concert scheduled for Saturday at Bush Stadium. <clears throat> uh, the band confirmed late Friday afternoon. Uh, behind the curtain here, uh, you guys were out of the office, but the boss walked in around 1030 on uh, Friday afternoon, right after the show. And he said, hey, man, I'm, I'm hearing that the show's going to be canceled. I said, but why? <laughs> but why? No, maybe not, maybe not. I said, if we don't talk about it, that's not true. He goes, ah, it's pretty, I'm pretty good authority. So kind of new around 1030 on Friday morning. Uh, the postponement is due to illness. Uh, the band says, the band shared the information on social media platforms. The concert will be rescheduled and fans are asked to hold on to the tickets according to a letter sent to concert goers. Fans will be updated via email with the new date or any other event or information. Fans who can't make it to the new date can receive a refund. So, of course, speculation. And uh, the first thing, it's, pfft, show wasn't selling well, so they canceled. Right. <laughs> the show has been canceled due to lack of advertising funds. Show, like you know, show Final canceled <laughs> because of low ticket sales. No. Well, I will tell you that they wouldn't have, if that were the case, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have started to put up the stage. And it was like, all right, it was built. Yeah, they wouldn't, stage. they would not, if that was the case... They would not have spent all the money to erect a stage. Yeah, right. there's there's a ton of money already spent. Mm -hmm. Because they the stage was pretty much put together. Mm -hmm. Our friends that work with Live Nation that were building this and working with the crews, they gave a timeline like on their personal Facebooks, like how the day started, how the day ended. Like, yeah. you know, they were raring oh, to go. Man. Like the stage is built, like things Take are getting in place. And then like, you know, the news broke and then ah, let's pack it up. Yes. Yeah, a buddy of mine works for Guns N' Roses and told me the reason is because Slash's hat got holes chewed in it for mice, so they have to wait till a new one comes school. in. We can't on, have man. any of that. Slash's mm -mm. hat. Slash's hat. Yeah, pretty sad. No, that I think nice so many of the bands got COVID. Those guys uh, were around, I too. I think that's, that's the rumor. They were in town, and so um, I think uh, Richard Fortas and Slash were, like, going to guitar shops Friday just hanging out. Oh, they, they didn't call us. time. Call. You said they didn't call you? No. They didn't yeah. call you? Uh huh. We were in catering together once. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think uh, COVID was the uh, was the culprit. That's what I'm hearing. Mm. But it wasn't ticket sales. Again, they wouldn't have spent all the money to put up the stage. Yeah, they would have called it much. They earlier. would have called it. They would have called, not only would they they have called it earlier, but even if they were to call it on Friday, they wouldn't have they would they wouldn't have had the crew out there putting up that stage. Yeah, that's inexpensive. Very expensive. And I'm sure with this uh, with this type of cancellation, I'm sure they have insurance. Like insurance kicks in. Uh, yeah. And if it's an, if it's an actual band illness, then uh, you know, then then insurance kicks in and things are paid for that way. We did. Let's see. I want to say I can only really remember one show ever. That I was a part of that was canceled due to a sickness, and it was because Chester was sick. It was L.A. I want to say it was L.A. Chester the Cheetah? <laughs> no, uh, Chester Bennington. Oh, was, from, oh, from Lincoln Park. Oh, from oh, the Blues. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Goodness. This was goodness. Chester from Lincoln Park. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. 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 Meteora, Meteora Tour, and it was one show, and I think it was the L.A. show. It was somewhere in Southern California, I believe, and it was like a last minute, like he was sick he, he was sick for a number of days going yeah. up to it and it was like one of those like dude you should not be singing you should not be playing and they they finally canceled it and i i don't remember if we were on the makeup date but they did a makeup date it cost the band a ton of money but they did a makeup date like months after the the tour was over other than that i can't think of any other we've had i've had band members thrown up i've thrown up on stage uh, we've had a couple guys uh, go number two on stage because oh my you know you're just not 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 feeling great and you know you got to scream or sing some backup thing or something and you know it just it just happens. Well, but you can't you can't. I mean, there's different rules now. Back then there was no rules. Like if, you know now if you have COVID, yeah. if you test positive for COVID, like you can't be around. Right. Back then it was like oh you got the flu. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, get get out your there. ass Suck up there, up, boy. Up. Trash bucket. <laughs> well, so uh, Saturday night, uh, obviously you know free. So the wife and I, you know, the, the kids were somewhere else. 
the boy was eating his, you know, boneless wings, whatever he was doing. The girl was at cheerleading. Uh, so, hey, you want to watch a movie? Nothing serious. We were going to, you know, we were going to go see Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is, there were no times that worked out. Because that's a long movie. Like, that's a three-hour movie. Yeah. So there were, no, there were no times that worked out. And then we're like, you know what? That's a serious movie. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I just don't want, I don't want anything heavy. Maybe, maybe not yeah. a Sunday movie. Saturday. Oh, okay. Saturday. No, I don't, you know, I don't want anything heavy. Yeah. I'm hearing people leaving that theater, like, depressed. I don't need that. So going through, uh, you know, going through some of the apps and, you know, Netflix and Amazon and Hulu. Let's see, you know, let's watch, watch a movie that, you know, something lighthearted. So we stumbled upon that new Jennifer Lawrence movie. No hard feelings. Never hilarious. Hilarious. I knew it would be. Hilarious. The, the previews yeah. look hilarious. Hilarious. I don't know what, it, I, we didn't even look at the Rotten Tomatoes. It's her, uh, she gets 70. like somehow involved in this young man's life and she has to like break him in and like make him a man or whatever. So the premise is, so Matthew Broderick is, uh, and, and whoever his wife is in the movie, uh, they want to get their their kid who's going to college out of his shell. Right. He's like a, vir he's, he's right about to go to Princeton. He's a virgin. He never leaves his room. He's got no, he's got no friends. Oh, it's from the guys who brought you Good Boys. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, I don't know who that is. So uh, they're out on Montauk. Well, uh, not the one I watched. They're out on Montauk, and um, Jennifer Lawrence is a local. And Montauk in Long Island is a place that that gets that gets uh, you know population increases during the summer months. Mm -hmm. So she's a local, and uh, she needs a car. So they put an ad out saying, "Hey, if somebody will break in our son, we'll give you a car." Yeah. She needs So kind of prostitution, uh, whatever. Oh, boy. So she winds up answering the ad, and she's this crass, cursing, wow. goes through men kind of guy. It, it is, this is hilarious. This looks like an updated version, we were, and we were just talking about this. Was it me and you, Lauren? We were talking about Can't Hardly Wait mm. and those types of movies. Remember those? Yeah. Like, first of all, they don't. Uh, they don't live well. It has the <laughs> you know, you feeling like, of like Seth Green. It has the feeling of a teen comedy. That's what I'm saying. Like those wow. those kind of movies were kind of uh, all the rage back then. Can't hardly wait. What was it? The Trojan War. The uh, she's I all mean, that. She's Even all if that. You throw an American Pie and stuff like that. American Pie. Yeah, American Pie was like the the you oh know, the, yeah the quintessential top of the mountain for that. But this is this is that, but updated and more PC and, and flipped. Oh, it's not PC. Didn't well, seem not. PC at all. Oh, it is. This is not a PC movie. You not, you know what I mean. It's like our rated red band, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Is she full frontal in oh, this? Oh, yeah. I she knew gets it. into a, a into a fight oh, on a beach. Oh, this is the one on the beach. That's right. And she is, I mean, head to toe, bush <laughs> and everything. <laughs> I can't wait is to it see American? it. Is it American? The previews look excellent. Yeah. So... <laughs> I mean, I mean, you go, and it was one of those, whoa, you don't expect that. Jennifer Lawrence. Right. I love Oscar her. Oscar winner. Yeah. Incredible. Like beating people up. With her vagina. I mean, with her <laughs> boobies out and everything. Interesting. Hell yeah. But it was one, and it was one of those movies where after it was over, the wife and I looked at each other and said, good choice. Wow. Good choices were made tonight. Nothing heavy. We laughed. So if you're looking for one of those kind of movies to watch that it's not heavy, uh, mm. adult-themed, uh, crass, Jennifer Lawrence boobies. Directed by John Hughes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not. 70% oh. Rotten Tomatoes. Seven. Definitely felt like the new take on, like, old school or yeah. or Bad Teacher or those types of movies. Did you see it? Did you see this movie? No, I saw the preview, and I'm like, that's what it felt like in the preview. Mm. I'm like, oh, they're leaning back into, like, the R-rated comedy. Yeah. And that was kind of a R-rated comedy kind of had a comeback. I feel like we went through, like, a early aughts. Everything was trying to be PG-13. It was very watered down, as opposed to some of the R-rated comedies of the 80s. Yeah. And then I felt like there was kind of a re there's kind of a resurgence. There was, like, a little mini resurgence in that, like, maybe old school Step Brothers era. I think they were all, like... 
rated R. Some of the guy that the guy that did Joker, Todd Phillips. Some of yeah. his movies were kind of so. Well, Todd Phillips did old kudos. school, right? Yeah. Um, even when you go like, all even, pass. Even when you say like, oh, uh, that is it gratuitous nudity. You know, does Jennifer Lawrence need to be naked? Yeah, it actually drives the plot forward. Good. The fine plot. It just shows, you know, she's a psycho. <laughs> she, I mean, D Silver Linings Playbook, she plays kind of a wild lady in that as well. Like, actually crazy. Yeah. I mean, she she's a great actress. Yeah, it was good. Katniss Everdeen, whatever she's doing. I love her. What's the one where the dude, there was one uh, a few years back where the kid was, like, dating a porn star. Oh, Girl Next Door. Alicia Cuthbert. Oh, that yeah. That was good, too. Yeah. yeah. Emil Hirsch. Emil Hirsch. Uh, I just watched that not too long ago. Hold, that movie holds Timothy up. Oliphant. Really? Mm -hmm. Timothy Oliphant. Timothy Oliphant. Yeah. The bad guy. He plays, He's like, awesome. the, the porn director that's, yeah. like, bad. Oh, yeah. She's in, like, hiding. Yeah, I think so. She's like trying to go to high school for the first time. Right, and, and he's right. He's spying on her, and he recognizes her in a porno. Well, wasn't he spying on her from the window? Yeah, like a creepster. Right. Like, yeah, it's supposed to be like the her. '80s thing where you I had the, the neighbor uh, next door, you yeah. see her. Yeah, I had the opposite uh, experience Saturday night when Tina chose the movie, and she <laughs> chose. It's weird that Mood brought it up, but it's not the same movie. Not Good Boys, but this movie was called Good Boy. And it was like a Swedish foreign film with subtitles, a horror, where the girl goes on a date on Tinder with the dude and goes back to his house and he has a human, a guy in a dog suit. And he's like, this is my dog. And she's like, what? And he's like, listen, don't ask. It's really important you treat him like a dog. Don't talk to him like a human. This is an old friend of mine growing up. He's decided to live his life as a dog. I what? Him, like, it's crazy. What time were you watching that? Because Tina and I were texting on Saturday night. Uh, I was late. This right. good boy? Because she was asking me what? Because she, she asked what Not him that. and I were doing. That's what, that's what you think it's going to be. And there's a film called The Good Boys. <laughs> that's Molly oh. Shannon. That one looks awesome. Look oh, up Good, good Boys, Boy like 2023. Oh, three. Yeah. That's why it could get confusing if you're going to watch it with your, <laughs> your family. Be careful. Yeah, that one. Well, that's a weird looking dog. Yeah. That's the costume? So is it, is it actually scary? Costume? It's like a psychological thriller. Like, you don't really know what's going on with this thing. Like, what in the hell is that? <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> when you see the dog yeah. in the trailer, he. Okay, this is. So is, this, is this that movie? Winnie the Pooh stuff? Yeah. It's. It's it's weird, dude. It says it goes from slow burn to off the rails wild. That's accurate, and I would say as I at the end, I'm like, what the hell did the I just watch? Kind of bad dog costume. So when <laughs> Tina picks a movie, I see your shoulders. When you discuss with your significant other, like, all right, you want to watch a movie? Do you discuss like tone? Like, yeah, big time. Oh, I, I you know I, I want to watch something funny. I want to watch something new. I want to watch something we haven't seen before from old. Yeah, documentary. I want to watch. Yeah. If anyone out there watched this stupid movie, <laughs> email me about what you think the ending was. You need a support group? The ending was just so like, huh? Crazy. I got to see this one. It, it's disturbing. Is that? Is yeah, that in a way, it, it, disturbing, but also like, what the hell did I just watch? I didn't have, we didn't look at each other and go, good choice. <laughs> we looked at each other and go, what the hell was that? Oh, we good choiced each other and high fived. Good for nice. you. Wow. Good choice. We rolled the dice. And honestly, it's worth watching. It's very short. It's only an hour and it's like 16 minutes long. They yeah, didn't. Yeah, probably never going to watch that. It's kind of. Yeah, I'm not going to watch that. It's kind of messed up, man. Yeah. Those Swedes, they're making some goofy stuff. You're different now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah changed person. Norwegians. Oh, Norwegians. Same My difference. bad. Sorry, Jeez. Swedes. You got Mexican food yeah, delivered leave, leave to your house as well those. on Saturday. I know everything about you. Whoa. You had Mexican on Saturday? Mm-hmm. Must be nice. Again, Tina and I were texting heavily, like, Saturday night. Like, all, I mean, Tim and I were latched to the couch. So you had Mexican food, and then you watched the weird movie? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, went that to a dispensary for the first time this weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Never been to one before. I've never been either. And it was really I, Actually, I've been to one in Vegas. Hmm. I've been to a dispensary in Vegas. Never, never a local one here. Yeah. Went to one. Um, enjoyed it. 
Enjoy the whole experience. Suede? Suede, yeah. That's the one by, uh, by in between kind of where we live. Yep. Went to Suede. Uh, Crowded? No. Walked right up. I said, and I'm real nerdy. I'm like, I've never done this before. I like some marijuana, Hi. please. Can you help me? And, but I looked online. You know, you got to be 21 and up to look online. Did that, and I. They were so sweet to me. I said, I don't know anything about this. They, I'll, how did this go? I go hey, uh, how are you? I'm Colton. I'll be your butt tender today. Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you looking for? This nice young lady took me back. She goes, you did everything right. She goes, I love that you looked online. I go, thank you so much. They were just like so supportive of a novice. Felt good. What do you mean you looked online? Like I, mean, I like I, what? Because uh, you can you order. Wanted? Yeah, I was like, I just before I went, I like to have all the information. And they even have a little section on Sway's website that's like, what to expect, which helps people like me. And so I read that. Well, what do, what, what do you do? Like, you walk in, does you somebody your ask ID, for your ID immediately? They put you in the system. They explain what they're huh. doing. She's now in the system. I'm in the no system. Oh. Way to go. I know. Now you're on I the noticed list. I noticed a black helicopter outside this morning. Oh, uh, now you're Much part of the system. Much different than the mid-90s and late 90s. Um, no, but I, I had that experience, and it's all very, you know... You got to stand and like one door will buzz you in and then they tell you when you leave after you get everything, they're like, all right, when you walk out, that door has to close before the one that lets you outside will open. Oh, the airlock. And so I'm like, okay. So that was like the most nerve wracking part of like the door is closed. Yeah. This door isn't open. This door isn't opening. I'm like, I'm going to lose my freaking mind. <laughs> and then finally it opened. You're, That's you're like at a gun range, by the way. And a spaceship. Oh, I've never been to a gun range. Really? Either. Maybe you I'll go there. You, when you, 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 you're like in between, so one door's got to close before you open the other one. Yes. So you just gave your ID over. Said I'm you interested walk in, in finding things and out. And there's a showroom? There's a showroom. They have all sorts of like, you know, um, accoutrement. Glass, glass cases? No. Oh. Not, I love the, the, accoutrement, but it used, used to be paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> The, the marijuana itself is behind the counter where you can't access it, okay? But there's like a rolling paper station if uh -huh. you want to buy that. Mm -hmm. um, and then when a woman with a iPad comes up and goes, what are we interested in? And then I... Ex oh, hi, I'm oh, Brenda. Oh, hello, I'm oh, Brenda. I'll be your today. Yeah. And then I said, this is what I'm interested in. And then they get it ready for you and they're lovely <laughs> and you leave. Brenda, Brenda this whole thing go. makes me uncomfortable. Would you mind coming out back and just selling me a bag of alleys? <laughs> right. Like nature intended. Can you just meet me behind the dumpster with some loose bills? You know, there's a Taco Bell across the street. Let's yeah. go meet there like normal people. Parking would. lot, yeah. Oh, yeah. And hey, there's signs you can't smoke when do you on think, the premises. When do, you think the point, uh, when, when do you think we're going to get to the point where you walk up and they just go, how high? How high do you want to be? That's all, Real that's high? The, that's the only question. How high? How high you want to get? Well, I'm sure you could say, I'm sure you could go, all right, I want to get, I want to go to the moon. Oh, yeah. Sure. Samson, send me the moon. <laughs> send me get to the moon. Lifted. They have everything like that, like online and they're a <laughs> person. If you're like, I really want to get blazed, they can help you with that. I didn't really uh, want to get blazed. I just wanted to experiment and have some fun. And so they like that. I experiment and have some fun. <laughs> like I want to be hanging from the chandeliers by the end of the night. These days with the like 30% THC or whatever, who, who goes into one of these places and says, I didn't really want to get blazed. Yeah. No, I, mean, I don't. Everybody's, you're there to get blazed. I want something that's like 10%. No, yeah. not man. Sure. You need to go back to 1978. I'm in 1970. <laughs> I walked in and I go. I think it's a different game. What is this? <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they don't, they probably don't get as many novices is i mean everybody's been going now for like the last six months like i'm right. the last well, to arrive oh, maui wow i know but maui wowie is like the basics <laughs> what is this amateur 18 percent stuff what no back when we were back when we were younger it was get high or not get high well, there's no degrees. did it work or not work yeah <laughs> am i high or am i smoking oregano i don't know i don't know hmm. <laughs> right i don't know but it smells like pizza in here <laughs> it's too That's good a spice now. cabinet, Scott. Did I get oh. ripped off again? And now there's different degrees. There's, you know, uh, how many different strains? Oh my and, gosh, it's over my head. You it's know, indica. Much. Everything's designed for you to like dissociate from your body. You looking for body it's too high strong, or man. Mind high? I don't know what that means. <laughs> I was looking for a sativa. They strain, don't either. <laughs> mellow, are you just stringing words happy. together? Yes, they are. But are, I, are you looking for a body high? I would say I don't know what that is. Listen to me. This would is what I was would looking Would you for. like to be locked into your couch? I like what they do on the websites because they say, like, this strain is going to make you calm and happy and talkative. Or this strain is going to make you sleepy and you're not going to want to talk calm. to anybody. Calm, happy. Mm. I was looking for, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. productive. And some that of them will jack you up. Some of them will give you 
Anxiety if you're prone to it. Right. I want to feel as if the FBI is right about to burst into my house. <laughs> what will get, what'll get uh, me there? That's going to be uh, uh, here. That's every time. We, we've got that in a special cabinet. <laughs> well, again, all right, I want to smoke and I want to feel like everybody in the neighborhood knows I'm high even though I'm on the couch. <laughs> you should call it, yeah, what it actually is. Is that a Maui Wowie? They should be like, would you like existential dread? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or did I file my taxes right in 2017? <laughs> what's, what's that one over there? Uh, I'll take taxes 2017. What's Let me that take one it over in the paranoia there? case. Yeah. What's that one under the table? That's called FBI coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're oh. giving it to, they're still giving it like fun, like ice cream cone. And I'm like, yeah, that's not how it made me feel. Right. But like but uh, I, in federal indictment I, is what you should call this. Speaking of federal indictment, I left thinking like, I'm driving with this stuff in my but car right legal. now. But it's, it's legal. It's legal. I know, but, but you, you want a list. About. But you feel, now you're on a list. I'm on a list. But I felt strange. And I got home and Tim was like, what happened? And you, know? you keistered it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I walked into you put... my house with it in my ass. <laughs> why did you smuggle this in this way? <laughs> like, you know you're allowed to have this. Bathroom? I thought I had to. Oh, man. I thought that's did what the airlock the room was for. Yeah, hang on. Like, uh, I'll take a sativa. Do you guys have, like, mini uh, tubes of lube? <laughs> what? No, you could just sit in a bag. Man, you don't have to do this. that anymore. <laughs> man. Yeah, we don't have to do that anymore. You get pulled over for whatever and just start eating the weed. Like, <laughs> right. and you would have been fine. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you don't have to do that, lady. You just I know chill dude, out. I know dude, did that. Uh, bus, bus got pulled over. He panicked. He just ate all that he had. I guess it was like a full bag worth. I don't know how much that is, but like ate it. And uh, thankfully, we had a day off that day. And he said that he went back to sleep and he woke up the following day. Oh, yeah. my goodness. He slept some 20 mm. something hours. Just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Woke up and went, what the hell? Yeah. What happened to the day? Yeah. Oh, it's it's over, man. It's over. It's, it's over. No, it, this is know, and and probably they wouldn't have even checked for weed. Like, they didn't even probably check. He just ate. Oh, my God. The <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember. I, don't remember. I, don't know. <laughs> I had a guy that I knew in high school, and he had uh, liquid LSD. Oh, no. Liquid LSD. Wait, what is, is it? it always usually? liquid I though? It it's on like a tab, like it's always liquid. Right? I think you would normally put it on something, a, a sugar cube or whatever. And, yeah. But he was. This is it. Keith. R.I.P. Keith. R.I.P. R.I.P. Keith. R.I.P. to his brain. Wow. Uh, because wow. after this particular incident, now he's just Keith. gone. He thought he was getting busted, and he wound up taking the whole thing. Oh, no. Man. No. Oh man. Oh, yeah. No return right there. Oh yeah. He tripped for seven days. Oh, MK Ultra. He's gone. He's gone, dude. He's a Manchurian candidate now. Uh, Keith wound up getting in touch with me. Keith watches Fraggle A couple Rock. years ago. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah. Came from a very rich family. Keith, I believe his father invented the beer helmet. Not kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. We need to what? meet his father. <laughs> did mighty good work. The two can on the <laughs> construction <laughs> beer helmet. <laughs> Dad's an entrepreneur, <laughs> and his kid got into this. Ah, the sins of the father. Yeah, I'm heir to the beer helmet dynasty. <laughs> Nepo baby. You mean, you mean to tell me there's a connection? The ultimate Nepo baby. I believe there's some kind of connection there. You That's know, like amazing. his dad like was part, was part of the team. Anyway, had a lot of money, um, and then uh, I, when I moved to St. Louis, and, and this was high school, you know, obviously back <laughs> East Coast. When I moved to St. Louis, somebody had told him I was living here. Great. So he wound up getting in touch with me somehow. And this is when I was living in South City. And uh, he came to my house. Oh, wow. Oh, he came it wasn't to my a phone house. call. No, he came to my house. Keith, who tripped for seven days, was never the same af after that. Right. Is a beekeeper somewhere in Illinois, and his car runs on uh, old uh, cooking oil. No, Love well, that yeah. 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 Oh. Dude, I don't think yeah. anybody know this guy. That's awesome. Can, uh, can he reach out to me? I want to convert my I, I haven't spoken to him in, in 10 years. Yo, that. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So he's beekeeper. Not good for him. Totally gone. That's he's good. a beekeeper in Illinois. And his, and his, no, his car runs like French on French fry, old <laughs> yeah, French fry oil. Like dude, I, dude, I swear so to God, good. I think I might know this dude. Really? This is insane. I used to work at a gas station in Edwardsville, and the dude, this Really weird dude would come in, and his car ran on. I don't know if he's a beekeeper or not, <laughs> but he's the only guy I've ever met. Was his name Keith? I can't remember. Oh, well. His car ran more on. Than one guy that has their car run on old cooking oil. Yeah, but this guy seemed like he'd keep bees. 
Do you know what I mean? Like the guy I'm talking about, he'd go restaurant to restaurant and get the old fry oil, and his car it stunk so bad. <laughs> yes, it's it stunk. the parking lot, and I'm like, oh, I'm just smelling like old, stinky French fries and beer battered fish because he was using like. Oh, he'd go to the restaurants, and be like, "I want your old oil," and he'd just put it in his car. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's what he would do. He would go to he would go to like McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Just ask for the old fry oil. Yeah. Oh, oh, and ask for the old fry oil that's and his it. car, and but it, it stunk. By the way, I'm a, I'm a future beekeeper, so let's let's keep the uh, the, the beekeeping the, ba- the, be- yeah. the beekeeping bad talking. Hey, just, somebody to, who's to got bees. Yeah, but do you keep them? I mean, they're <laughs> no. kept. He kills them. But they're you, kept on nah, the farm. No, nah, it's a verb. It's like you gotta, you know, beekeeping is awesome. Keep, man. You gotta keep. We you have daily hives. activity. You don't keep. You got. You hives? don't keep. Yeah. You get the honey out of the hive. We just got our first batch. You're an owner. Bee shepherd sounds cooler. Bee shepherd. You get a big shepherd Ooh, staff. Yeah. yeah. With like one of those things the Catholic Church smokes everybody yeah, out. Yeah, and with. who am I kidding? I know, I'm, I'm not the going to those hives. Yeah, you're not. You haven't, you haven't gone over hives. there? You don't keep. Aww. No, I drive past them. Like when I <laughs> like when I get out of the property, I go, I'm not, I want nothing to do with this. Bees. Does your wife take care of them? Who, who's handling those bees for you guys? They handle themselves. Okay. You're coexisting with bees mm-hmm. at your farm. That's that pretty we cool. We bought. Like, there's three, you know, you buy, like, the whole thing system. Yeah, yeah. Filing cabinet. Man, yeah. I'm envious. That's so cool. I want to come down there and just the check bee it out. Yeah, just I want to check it out. Get a suit. Yeah. Got to get the bee suit. You don't have a bee suit? Me personally, no. Oh, man. You got to get that the fog. Yeah, I want nothing to do with them. I need to chew into, into that honeycomb, anyway. man. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a future beekeeper. Yeah. That's something I'm very right. interested in, yeah. All right. Well, I'll maybe put you yeah, in I think in any wise person's Keith. a future beekeeper. Well, wasn't that something on your bucket list was bee-related, right? Yes, yes, yes. I we got like, some emails like about do that. it. Let's do like it. Let's do that. Let's do it. Hey, well, you know I'll, I'll call Keith up. And you know, we'll, uh, we're my, actually, I probably, I took the first step, really. I mean, I've been a pet owner. I've been a uh, uh, a kid raiser and all that. And now, learn you can be proud. What? We've got plants. Oh. Did you get some for your ladder? We I'm, got not, I'm not going to applaud that. We everybody's got plants. That's wrong. I got plants at my house. Uh, I'm not, I'm not they, talking about an orchid next to the kitchen sink that you're going to let die. Like what kind of plants did you get? Uh, we have a. Uh, oh shoot! I knew you were going to ask me that. That's okay. We have this really interesting succulent. It's called like a chain cactus and something right. or other. Uh, we got a uh, something that looks like a Christmas fern, but it's not. It's not a Christmas fern. It's it's called something else. I'll have to give you the the, the names, but but man. We are so stoked. Can I go back to something more exciting? We are, we are plant parents, and just listen to me. Oh, Jesus. You have three seconds within, to finish. Within, within, to two, talk about plants. within two days of getting these things, I, I was like, should I call Learn? No, I'm not going to call Learn yet. No, I'm not going to call her yet. We posted something, about five friends came out of the woodwork and said, dude, we started with three plants, and now we have 50. I think we're going to be one of those people that has like a deck just filled with plants, and I almost ordered a mandarin orange uh, tree yesterday. Dude, <laughs> you know, exciting. Alternative <laughs> rock radio. Yeah. yeah. Into it. You need to get the app. <laughs> you like plants? I'm talking to our demographic, and half of them are plant owners. Let me say this: you all need to download for free. You don't need to pay the uh, subscription. <laughs> called Picture This, and yeah, it helps you take pictures awesome. of plants. It identifies, tells you what's wrong with it, tells you. You gotta pay you. for that. Oh my God, I've never There's felt so old version. in my life. What? You ready for this though? If you well, take you a picture with just your iPhone, this guy's and then you go back through your photo thing, I'm you can click about, on it for more info, and it shows you what. I'm, ta- you ta- I'm you talking, talking about a guy you. that took acid for seven days straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Your farm and your bee bees, keeper. and we can't talk about our no. cute plants and ferns. I do want to talk back to the dispensary. <laughs> back to you, okay. okay. With wh- whatever back to this, plants. whatever this, you know, new all these strains and all the, you know, you look at the buds. And they have these crystals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the mm. crystals. And it's, Fuzzy. It's, they're way different than the shake we used to get. Yes. You know, you're picking out, you know, seeds and, seeds and stems. My whole thing is, you smoke it, you take it, you ingest it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell it's going to do to me. If I have two martinis, I know what that's going to do to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so many variables now. Like, I know I if I drink four beers, I know what I'm going to feel like. If I take a hit of whatever... Sour Patch Diesel, whatever the hell it is, or <laughs> exactly what I ordered. Mm-hmm. You know, seventy-five milligrams or whatever. A who's a what's it's? Yeah, I don't know what kind of ride I'm going on. That's why I went low, slow and low. I'm not. Let me just be completely transparent. I do not get stoned all the time or anything like that. As we know, I do the Delta Eight seltzers. I over the weekend just finally had a curiosity about Eat, it, man. <laughs> and I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I don't like to smoke. 
because uh, I want to keep my lungs healthy. Um, but again, this is one of those things that I wanted to do just like randomly and have have a first experience. It was lovely. And am I going to become totally stoned all the time? No, this is just like I was having a Saturday. Again, Guns N' Roses canceled. Okay, yeah. Have I a go Saturday, to the dispensary. Fine. She did hang beads in every doorway of her home. <laughs> now I want to get high and, and listen to Stevie Nicks. That's we, fine. We painted the shutters of our house. I got stoned, and then I painted the shutters of my house with my wow. husband. Well, there you yeah, go. That's what you do. You walk in, you say, give our me house productive looks gorge. And it wasn't, Your house didn't it was have productive. shutters before yeah. that, though. Unless Moon gets one of those plants that's like uh, like a little shop of horrors. I don't want to hear yeah. about it. I'm not bringing Fly you any trap? fruit. I'm making lemons I don't want your fruit. and oranges, and I'm going to have a garden in my living room, and you ain't getting fine. Right. I love your new plants. I'm excited fine. for you. Good I'm for you. excited, Congrats, too, man. and you I shall reap the benefits. To Welcome to the green world, man. But speaking of weed, uh, my two native gardens, both, I need to tend to those. i got a lot of weeds growing in those. Oh, good for you. They haven't spent much time out there in that. Okay, pretty ready interesting. microphones are ready to be shut off. Oh. <laughs> They're talking about, I thought this is plant talk. Now, yes, I, I know what two martinis would do to me. Mm. I know uh, if, if I drink, uh, you know, uh, a big glass of whiskey, I know what that's going to do to me. We do have two former bartenders in this room. And I did find this quiz over the weekend. Okay. Speaking of beverages, adult beverages. Let's see if I can shake off the old bones. So, Rafe, you were a bartender? Indeed, yes. For how long? Uh, a long time. 15 years almost. 15 year bartender. I filled in at the, I used to work at Fallon's in Olivet, and when Amy, my girl, would need to take a break, I would fill in as a bartender, and I was a cocktail waitress. Okay, Hello, cocktail everybody. waitress. Did, were you a bartender at all? I did celebrity bartending, and I realized I am really bad at this. Sorry, me too. <laughs> like, I gave me a full, like a full-blown respect, man. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a I, skill. I was bad. And I got to bartend at DB's one night. What? Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoyed myself, but I realized, like, I don't know what, what you're talking about. It was fun working the soda gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could do that. <laughs> My hands got really one. sticky, and I wasn't a fan of that. But, uh, but other than that, people were like naming drinks and different things, and I was and like, that, oh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't even know how uh -oh. to do that. This Depending is on a how quiz. fancy it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go keep score. Who was the better bartender? <laughs> well, this may be. We're keep gonna go score, back and forth. I didn't work at the uh, the Ritz. Well, these are these are all pretty classic cocktails. Classic cocktails. Okay. Classic. Classic. Classic cocktails. I'm going to give you the ingredients, and you tell me what the drink is. Hmm. Does a C pass? Because uh, I'm probably going to get less than seventy percent here. Would you like to be involved in this? <clears throat> I was just going to go with the two bartenders, but if you want to, if you want to get thrown in too, you want to give me the first, just just the first pass because they'll probably, you guys will beat me in this. I don't know, man. It's okay. been a while. It's been okay. like ten. I'm going to involve Moon here. All right. Okay. I would love to guess. Wow. Okay. And you have a chance to steal. If Moon doesn't get it, you could steal. Okay. Just say your name. All right. Say your name, say, say your, your name. name. Wait, so we're quizzing Moon, and then we are going but, to clean And then up. I'll go to Moon. Uh, then I'll go to Learn next. And then I only stand a chance if, 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 if she doesn't get it. First. Okay. Okay, Moon. Yeah. Tequila, lime juice, triple sec. Learn. No, no, he's got a chance oh. to. Uh, tequila, lime juice, triple sec. Um, pass. Learn. Margarita. Learn. Margarita, yes. Oh, yeah, that's, nice. that makes sense. <laughs> Wait, are we buzzing in or are we going clockwise? What's, what's no, you, got, you got to buzz. I'm you got to say your name. Him, and then, then we got, buzz in. Then okay. If he doesn't get it, then you have a chance to steal. And I'll, and I'll say pass. Okay. After I buzz, after the requisite time has passed. Okay. <laughs> Rules Jesus on the fly. Christ. It's the wrist show. Here we go. This is for learn now. You're done. Oh. You're done. I'm, I'm, I'm moving to learn. Oh, damn it. Now I get it. Oh. I didn't understand If I say pass, the then you can if you are, If she says pass or does not get it in the records of time, you guys all get to steal. <laughs> okay, right. Scott, right. I'm going to throw you in on this. Are we all going to be right. behind each other in the first commercial yeah. break? Here we go. Learn. Vodka, cranberry juice, Contro, and lime juice. Cosmopolitan. Yes. Mm. Well done. Huh. Thank you. Rafe. Yes. Bourbon or rye whiskey, bitters, and sugar cube. Old fashioned. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Scott. All right, easy. Okay. White rum, lime juice, simple syrup. White rum, lime juice, simple syrup. Three, two, one. Drink. Learn. Learn. <laughs> Mojito. No. Damn. Moon. Moon. Sex on the beach. What were the ingredients? I'm not saying them again. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. White rum, lime juice, simple syrup. 
I don't know. Daiquiri. Daiquiri. Oh. Yes, it was. Daiquiri. They'll have their day oh. again. Yeah, and for some reason, I'm thinking daiquiri. mint mojito. I feel like it was go. missing an ingredient, but yeah. mm-hmm. perhaps not. There's okay. Strawberry puree. This one? I've never seen a green daiquiri. Me too. Moon, white rum, lime juice, soda water, sugar, mint. Three, Mojito. Two. Oh, oh, dang. Thanks for the answer, Lauren. Yeah, that was nice. Right. She handed it to me. On the board. Learn vodka, tomato juice, Tabasco. That is oh. a Bloody Mary, Riz. Oh, I knew that one. Delicious. Rafe. Yes. Whiskey, bitters, vermouth. Red vermouth. Oh, that is a, uh, uh, Three. Whiskey bitters, Two. red vermouth One. is a learn. Learn. Manhattan. Yeah. Oh, I think of it. Alcoholic in the show. That's an old fashioned again. That's what you've had when we've gone out to dinner. Yeah. I love being good Manhattan. That's a tasty little treat. I knew that too. I've made hundreds of them. Uh, who's it now? Uh, uh, Scott's. Scott. Gin. Dry vermouth. Uh, uh, um, Three. Two, the martini. One. Oh, the, no. the martini. That's nice. The martini. The martini. The martini. I'm saying Burton, 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 Burton. <laughs> All right. Uh, moon, vodka, ginger beer, lime juice. Oh, oh, I know that. I know that. I know that. Oh. Three, oh. two, one. <laughs> Learn. Three. Learn. Moscow Mule. Yeah. Oh, dang it. I knew that. You put that in a copper glass That's or a right. copper thing, yeah. right? You have okay. it at the Derby. Fart. Right. Hey, read about that. Like, how much I, of this is being a bartender and how much of this is being uh, an borderline alcoholic? alcoholic. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I knew that one. <laughs> Look this up, because remember Moscow Mules were very, very popular? <laughs> yeah. They still are. If you drink the copper, it Yeah, the like people were drinking out yeah. of these copper mugs <laughs> and they were getting sick. Mm. Like, you're, like, it's okay every once in a while, but if it, if it's a lot. Yeah, you're drinking out of a penny. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, let's see. Safe. Copper mugs are safe to drink from, as long as they're lined with another non-reactive metal such as nickel or stainless steel. Unlined copper mugs can also be safe, but they should be used only for cold or room temperature beverages that are not acidic. So they're saying steer clear if you're using heat or acidity when it comes to the copper, because that can leach the copper into the drink. Yeah, I don't want that. And I bet it has to do with the supposed full copper and it's a little knockoff. Copper exposure and toxicity are, the, are only possible with a great amount of copper exposure to the body. So, <clears throat> All right, this uh, fa- one final one here for the bartender quiz. Okay. And this one is worth 50 points. Oh, my God. Wow. Dang. And this will be, you have to yell out your name. All, okay. all board. So, okay. This is an all play. Guys, <laughs> got an all play. Okay. White rum, pineapple juice, coconut cream. Rafe. Rafe. White Russian. Learn. Learn. Pina colada. Yeah. Dang it, dang it. Yeah. I was getting there. Good. I was getting yes. there. Yep. Pineapple juice. Yes. 50 points. Learn wins. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Dang. Wow. Man. She smoked us. Good Congratulations. For you. Wow. Can't win simple today. Congratulations. <laughs> Go to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, somebody's saying you were painting shutters. Yeah. Were they your shutters on your house? <laughs> Uh, what is that? Some s- sexual term? Yes. I no. Was no, no, no. Say like, no, you, no, like your neighbor's neighbor, shutters. Neighbor shutters. Oh, thought Feeling that was good. some running a train thing, like paint your oh, shutters. No, not everything's your boobs sexual. Are new. Our minds don't go there. Oh. Not everything's sexual. Though. All right, sorry. Yes, it was my house. And I would show you a photo, but I don't know. I don't want people to know where I live. Anyway, uh, no, there, we went from like white shutters to black shutters. Oh, you're the only house with shutters? <laughs> we are. We're the only people. Look for the house you know, with the shutters. Only house with shutters. <laughs> um, I know uh, when Ray first started the show, and I was on vacation, you guys did the one chip challenge. Mm. Yes. Did you was, hear about uh, what happened with the story behind the one chip challenge? Yeah, you talking about with the teenager? Kid, kid died. died. Yeah. High school kid, right? Yeah, a 14-year-old kid from Massachusetts died uh, not last Friday, the Friday before after doing the One Chip Challenge. Uh, and, and, yeah, we've done it here. It involves eating one of the spiciest tortilla chips in the world and then waiting as long as you can before eating or drinking anything. Now, we did, I think, maybe the first version of it. We did the very first one before it, like, caught all the heat. And then we did the... No pun intended. I, I want to say, like, th- oh, maybe third generation or because something? Because every year they put on a new one and it seems to get crazier and crazier. We had a third generation one that was, like, um, it came out when we had just gotten over here, which would be about, uh, I don't know, 2018, 19, and it sat for some time. Not saying that it took any of the effectiveness away, 
But uh, I mean, they're hermetically sealed. I mean, it's just like yeah, yeah. And it came, but the coffin sat right there in front of the board for years. Yeah, it's and still then, here. And then Rafe was across the the board from me, and I and I was like, "You want to initiate yourself into the show, really?" And he said, "Sure." And he bit it and he cursed, and I had to dump out, and we ended the show. Well, <laughs> so the, this kid, this fourteen year old kid, was at I school don't that. when a when a buddy gave him the chip, and and you know, space spicy food challenges are a thing on TikTok and, and YouTube and. Yeah, you, you see people do it online all the time. Well, remember, we did the chocolate, the, oh, the chocolate the, one the too. Chocolate that, one that was brutal. Oh. I did the brutal. I, I did the chocolate one too. That. What was, do you mean? That was brutal, like hot, or it was, was it, it was worse? It was worse. Uh, it tasted good, but it was a uh, ghost pepper crystals or something like that, and and, and it was Carolina be, Reaper. Yeah, and because Damn. of the yeah, that's right, and because of the chocolate, the chocolate just coated everything and just made it so oh, it much worse. Mm. So I thought we'd have to hospitalize Scott. Scott anyway. went down. His yeah. his face turned the same color as his hair. It was bad. So this kid in Massachusetts, um, buddy gave him a chip. After eating it, he got a stomach ache. Went to the nurse. Um, and then didn't wasn't sent home, but went home. You know, after the school day was over, he was preparing to leave for basketball tryouts, and his brother found him passed out, taken to a hospital where he wound up passing away. Wow. Uh, I know autopsy's pending, so not, they haven't said what the cause of death was. They're they're connecting it to the one chip challenge, and it, the one chip challenge is is uh, the company's Pocky. Mm-hmm. Pocky that makes the um nope. the little no, say, that's Packy P A Q U I. Oh. You're thinking Pocky. of Taki. No, I'm thinking of a uh, Pocky, which is like a Japanese oh, dessert. Oh, P O C K Y. No, those are those little chocolate. Those sticks. are delicious, yeah. and I've never heard anyone. They're so Nobody's, delicious. They have they're never killed anybody. I, I, I know. <laughs> I've had many They've of them. They've made the world better. <laughs> uh, and we've heard, of, you know, we've heard of people getting sick doing this, but this is the first time I'm hearing of somebody actually dying. Uh, this one chip challenge has been around for a couple of years. Uh, in 2020. Uh, Texas high school issued a warning to parents after five kids shared a chip, and uh, one 15-year-old kid lost consciousness and began having a seizure. Wow! Um, wow! From a shared chip. Yeah. So, according to the to a to U.S. Poison Awareness website, consumption of large amounts of capsaicin, which is the stuff that makes it hot, can cause repeated vomiting and can lead to life-threatening esophageal uh, esophageal damage. Um, and every year, the tortilla chips. Use different peppers for the challenge. This year contains two of the hottest chili peppers in the world, the Carolina Reaper, which is the one we had, mm -hmm. and the Naga Viper, N-A-G-A hmm. Viper. Never heard of that. Remember, the chip comes in individually wrapped, you know, tortillas in a coffin. Remember the pepper guy? I forgot his name. Uh, the pepper guy gave some to a Video Ben back in the day. He brought some in, remember, like a, a, oh, yeah. a raw pepper, and I, oh, I took yeah. a little sliver of it, and, man, it made my, made my lips. Oh, yeah. Fold in. Well, Pocky's pulling the pulling the whole thing, pulling all their stuff off the shelves. Good. Like they pulled the the one chip challenge off the shelves, and the company in a statement said, uh, "Like uh, the challenge is intended for adults only, with clear and prominent labeling highlighting the chip is not for children or anyone sensitive to spicy foods." Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they say they've seen an uptick in minors jumping in on the viral challenge despite the warning label on the packaging. What? So they got their name out there, right? So, like, what's the best thing for this company? And and, and I don't know if do they own themselves outright? Is this a, like a, a, a I don't know who they're a else? subsidiary of, or okay. if they're if they let's say something. they're not. Let's say it's you know Riz Farms built this thing, and, and they, they've they've had a number of years of of great press and and heat and people advertising for them, like us doing it on the show and all that kind of stuff. Why don't why don't they just go the Dorito route and start making these regular ones? They, they do. Make, make hot chips. They do. They do. Oh, they do? They and do. they're delicious chips. So we buy them all the time. Yeah, they do. Pocky does now make like oh, bags, okay, of, bags okay. of They're of... not just doing the single no, chip. No. And I always pronounced it Pacqui. But you're saying Pocky? I don't know if I'm saying it right. Okay. Hey, man. We're from St. Louis. It's just Packy. It's Packy. It's Packy. We buy them all. They have a ghost Easy. pepper ones that are really hot. Just to, And we've bought them before. And they're so hot. We just... We hated them, <laughs> but they have other ones that are like you know they have like cheddar and yeah, just yeah, normal yeah. ones, yeah, and they're just, good. Just give me a little flaming hot. You like know if, what I'm saying? Yeah, they're good. Like and organic they, they, Doritos. Yeah, they make big bags, you know, a la Doritos. Oh, okay. Do they do well? Find. Are they like on like eye level shelves here? <clears throat> uh, I've seen them at Schnucks. Yeah. Uh, oh, all right. They have at Whole Foods too. Like, well, good for them. So yeah. they got they're their usually, they got their foot in the door. They're in the game. Quit this crap. In the kind of healthy chips. Yeah, they are. I think they're made of organic material. Yeah, they're not on like the normal snack. They're in like the healthy snacks. Interesting. Side of things. 
Not that one, because that's actually killing people. This is a Amplify Snack Brands Incorporated so is what put this one out in They're done with it now, huh? For now. Is that is, is there one in there, or is that the one that Rafe ate? I think this is the one that Rafe ate, because it was... It's um, like a half year, Open right? her up. Oh, yeah. it's Well, it's probably very stale. It was already stale Ooh. when I ate it. Yeah, it's still in there. Oh, it's oh, still yeah, in there? Yeah. It was expired when I ate it. Why don't you throw that bag of death out? Yeah, but we yeah. did it. We had to chew the whole thing and swallow it, and I'll tell you well, what. Well, that's the challenge. The chip, the chip hurt, but the tummy ache later. Oh. Oh, yeah. That was the bummer. And that's what the chocolate did to me. So I, I had kind of like a stomach ache for probably five, six hours after the chip. That chocolate messed me up Man. for at least a day or two. Mm. That was brutal. That was a Friday, wasn't it? Well, kids I watch. So. So, yeah. I felt terrible. For Hot days. ones, right? Like I know a lot yeah. of kids watch, and we all watch. Like cool parents watch it with their kids, and I, yeah. who hasn't watched Hot Ones? And so you watch celebrities, and all that goes viral, and so it's funny. And you know, I can no, get there's why. There's all sorts of these really? hot things challenges. So I can see why it's entertaining, and why kids would want to be a part of that. And oh, yeah, even my kids, you know, right. they'll they'll buy spicy stuff, and they'll you know try it at home. And I go, I, I just warn them. I, I always say, don't bring this to school. Yeah. Good. Remember when people were doing like the milk challenge and all that stupid crap? <clears throat> uh, they got to like finish a gallon of milk because you physically can't do that. Right. Yeah. Well, I just say, I'm like, don't do this stuff at school. I, you know, I just don't want to, you giving it to a kid and this happening. That's my nightmare. Mm. Oh, remember? And then the, and then the one uh, a couple years ago was that cinnamon thing. Oh, yeah. People, people, oh, yeah. Couple, eat a spoon people, of cinnamon. A couple people died from that or something. Didn't well, you get it in their lungs. Hmm. Like, it's physically impossible to eat a spoonful of, of ground cinnamon. Because you get the top layer wet, and then it, everything underneath is dry. And then you you breathe in, and that cinnamon dust goes into your lungs. And that's no bueno. Mm -mm. Now you're breathing pumpkin spice. Now, yeah, that's, that's no good. So, yeah, the one-chip challenge off the shelves now. Mm -hmm. uh, one more thing before we move on, uh, a story I read over the weekend, and it made me think... Where would be, and, and let's say you're just an innocent bystander here, where would be the worst place to be if a brawl broke out? Like if a, if a multi-person brawl broke out, besides a gun facility. An elevator. Yeah, that's bad. Where, where more weapons could be fashioned. Like a hospital? Like now, like, oh my God, we're in, we're in this place. And everybody's oh. chairs and... Hmm. Oh, you know where? Bed Bath & Beyond in the kitchen section. I know That would be a bad place. It would be a bad place. That would be a bad place. I'm going to say a, uh, the baseball section of a sports. Yeah, like Dick's. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. It does, just straight up like, Dick's sporting Cool, place. now everybody has hockey sticks and bats. It <laughs> would be a horrible place for a brawl to break out. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. I, I, I thought Top Golf. <laughs> that's a bad that's one. A great one. So then you got a, you might be on the top deck too. Yeah, you, so you got a whole, you're, you're elevated got, and cornered. <clears throat> An industrial kitchen, you know, like your back in the restaurant back part. Pots yeah. and pans. And somebody on the uh, chat said Bass Pro. You know, they got compound <laughs> bows yeah. and all sorts of stuff. Sex around. toy shop. Oh yeah. They got some heavy duty dildos there. <laughs> yeah, who knows? They do. It's not only is it demoralizing, it's degrading. Oh, he's lubed himself up. Everybody be careful. I can't get him. I can't get him. <laughs> Don't hit that guy. That's why he's here. He wants to be hit. Get that stiletto out of my face. He started the brawl. This is his kink. Scott, where, give me a bad place to be stuck in a brawl. Oh, man. I would say also on a bus or something tiny where you can't really get out. Mm hmm. Yeah. That'd be a bummer. I'm thinking it's like strictly like where weapons could be used. Yeah. Okay. Okay. An, an axe throwing retreat. So also maybe another one would be the insect place at the zoo where all oh. the little insects are at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You start yeah, throwing the herpetarium fire at yeah. that, uh, <laughs> the herpetarium at the uh, at the zoo. Yeah. Here's a scorpion. Because there was a brawl that broke out at a bowling alley. Oh yeah, that's not a fun. In Mississippi. And people were using the balls. Wow. And they were throwing. Like they were using the balls and throwing them at people. Oh, dang. <laughs> Strong. And I can't imagine the chaos. Because if you try to run away, all the lanes are slippery. Right. Like if you try to... <laughs> you got those shoes if you on. Try to, if, if you try to get somewhere to hide. <laughs> like you got slippery lanes. Mm -hmm. You got... Heavy balls mm -hmm. flying all over the place. Nachos. You never want to stand your ground in Velcro shoes if you can avoid it. <laughs> yeah, that are like a you know wide foot. Yeah, 
Velcro shoes with super slippery bottoms. Oh, yeah. Hardware store would be. Yeah, somebody's at Home Depot. A terrible place. <laughs> just got hit by a rake, and here comes a guy with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, Does he have a freezer door? I'm a Lowe's guy. What's well, with Lowe's? Got a two by four coming at you. Oh That's yeah, all the lumber. Uh, but I can't imagine the chaos of being in a bowling alley. Well, the good thing you remember in Kingpin when they have that big tournament in Vegas and they walk in, he's like, "Wow, look at all these athletes!" And there's guys just sitting around there, <laughs> you know, bigger fellows. They're smoking, they're you drinking, say, and all you this. You say it's gonna be a four minute fight? Yeah, or you just quickly Before run I'm away and they breath. can't get you. They're like, "Ah, oh, I'm out of breath." So in, in uh, Mississippi, 10 to 15 people fighting, chairs, bowling balls being thrown through the air. They described it as absolute chaos. Wait a minute, <laughs> chairs? They're ripping those chairs that are stuck in the floor up <laughs> and throwing them at people? Probably from the dining room. Oh, yeah. Like up on the top. Uh, this is how police described a large-scale brawl that broke out at a bowling alley late Friday, ended with multiple people being arrested and hospitalized. Does anybody love that nasty-ass bo bowling <laughs> Alley feel I, like I, I yeah. okay so we went we went uh, it's been a minute but we went to like a really new like woo, <laughs> fancy like clean and almost everything looked like it was plastic I mean just like it was a nice bowling alley and I didn't like it it was almost like being in a hospital I was like why why I want I want that I want that smell I want that weird ass carpet that looks or like it's got sticks with the popcorn for butter from the fifties in it there may be an opportunity for us to bowl with Metallica's crew when they're in town whoa what yeah. That'd this is dope. kind of on the back end, like this is under wraps. But I'm telling not you, not anymore. Not yeah. anymore. Don't tell anyone. Metallica is their whole crew's in town that whole weekend. We got to go to some busted ass place. Oh, you it's know happening. what I mean? Like Saratoga I mean, Lanes, dude. Yeah, it's well, still it's smoking. Saturday because there's like you know Friday, the Friday show, mm -hmm. Saturday off, and Sunday. I don't want the smoking in the air, but I do want the smoke in the carpet. There's one where in does, Maplewood that's upstairs. Where does Iggy have his um, Saratoga bowl. Lanes? No, Cave Springs, Cave Springs Lane. Yeah, yeah that's a nice oh, yeah, one. Yeah. And that's a good Minerva. spot. We used to go to Crescent Bowl all the time. Mm -hmm. um, again, like just old. I don't think they've put anything Dude, in there since the 60s. I hate smoke. And I love, we went to Saratoga Lanes, which is the Maplewood one. It's upstairs. Mm -hmm. There's like eight lanes and a, a stinky bar. And oh, yeah. Pool that's tables. cool. That's a cool spot. And the smoke, people were smoking in the lanes, and everything was stained yellow. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I had a buddy throw a bowling ball through the window there. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It feels very old school. You feel it like a, you're in a time warp. It's been open since, like, 1916. Yeah, but, the, but do the, you the, like that? Because I been, like yeah. that, right? I, I love like it. that. Mm -hmm. Where? That bowling alley's talking about in Maplewood. Probably. Maybe. It's yeah. up the stairs. It's right by Strange Donuts. Bowling alley to the right, and then to the left are, like, the pool tables and stuff. Oh yeah, you rent like that whole place out. I like that, and then I, and then when there's like a like a hidden bar or something, and that's like that's a window where you're getting your pizza or something. Mm -hmm. oh. I don't know why. I just I love it's that. It's nostalgia. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. it's like VFW halls. Like I love going to VFW halls. So this feels like it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I haven't been there in years. It's got like an island bar, and then you don't. Have, it's not hidden. It's the center where the ashtrays are are built into the yeah into where you're sitting bowling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfection. Yeah. It was worth, I mean, I hate being around smoky places, but the experience, I was like, I can, I can survive one night because it was so authentic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They have these zappers, like smoke zappers that made it somewhat tolerable. I'm not going to say you still want to burn your clothes the next day, <laughs> yeah. but it didn't like, it didn't linger in the air as much because they had like these smoke zappers up top that were just like, Sucking I'm up sure you can't all the smoke in there anymore. There's no way. Oh, no, man. Bruh. <laughs> you can? I don't know whether you can. But they But do. people do. was. Huh. Yeah, they'll probably want to go to Flamingo Bowl. What? Those are cool, too. Like uh, too Pinnacle. Modern. I like going to Pinnacle. Because here's me. Modern. I like going whenever it's, like, dark. I, have you ever, like, glow bowled? They're playing. Oh, yeah. so they're playing Cosmic. the yeah. dome. Flamingo's right there. You know, that's where they're going to probably want to go. No, they're going somewhere else. Oh, okay. You tell them. <laughs> no, no. See, and and, and and I'm not crashing on those places because they're all they're all different. That's like that's a bar. Yeah. That's a bar with bowling alley, with a bowling alley. I'm looking for a bowling alley with a bar. Right. You know what I'm saying? The big difference. Big difference. Like I'm I'm looking for like people come in here to smoke and bowl, and then they drink because that's that's what because it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and even if it's smoke free, like Rafe said, when you're walking out, your clothes smell. Your clothes smell like, you know, like you soaked it up. Yeah. But damn it, I bowled double digits today, and that was, a, I'm sorry, triple digits. Triple digits. Oh, double's pretty good. Yeah. Double's pretty good, too, right? Yeah, that's my mom mm -hmm. used to tell me.
<laughs> oh, an 11 is pretty good. <laughs> Have you guys been to... My friend just bought Epiphany Lanes. What is that? I've never heard of that. I think it's like... It might be connected to an old Catholic church. I'm not sure. Epiphany? I've, I've heard of that, yeah. It is... Cres it, not Crestwood. Uh, does Moolah still have a... Uh, McKernan's uh, brother. It's off of 44. Tim McKernan's brother. Does Moolah still have a bowling alley? I don't know. Moolah Lanes. Epiphany right? Lanes yeah, to stay open thing? under I know that management. Weirdo, weirdo Steve uh, manages some lanes. Like I forgot which one, but it's down South County. What the hell is Weirdo Steve? He's one of the weirdos. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Weirdo you know Steve. him if you see him. He looks like me. He's a redhead. It's your brother. <laughs> but he's the one who's got 300 a few times. He always sends ah, it over. Bragging. Yeah, he's I good. love bowling. Like, and I don't bowl enough. You know, nobody ever wants to go. Yeah, South City. I do enjoy bowling. This is a, so apparently. I'm not good at it. Apparently, a bunch of Catholic churches down in South City historically had bowling alleys, and that's this is the last one. This is the only one that still has a bowling alley. So it's called Epiphany. That's pretty. Yeah. Neat. So I mean, look at the picture. So like, you know, look at the oh, brick. Yeah. Look at it's the got brick. That old school bowling alley feel. The brick from the church, and then mm -hmm. here's the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. Go down and show the counter. Scroll down. Boom. Oh yeah. Drop ceilings. Wood paneling. Awesome. That's what you want in a bowling alley right there, dude. There used to be a place in between Marion and Carbondale called Cuckoo's. I don't know if it's still around oh, or not. You know That's what I'm talking cool about? Name. And I yeah. feel like that is where I'm trying to get back there. to. It, one half of it was a dance club. The other half was cosmic bowling. Mm -hmm. And everybody was just token on c cigarillos and just... Listen, and I know... Every night ended in a fight. Yeah, every every you know night what, ended in a brawl. You know what, though? There was a code. You don't throw the balls. No. No. You don't, throw the no. Balls. you don't throw the balls. And don't damage the lanes. Those are you could fight. Take it out of the parking lot. And don't steal my rug. Don't be th <laughs> Don't <laughs> be the problem balls. was. And don't you dare rug. leave with the shoes on. <laughs> Cuckoo's was a weird place because they had outdoor sand volleyball too. Yeah. So it was a lot happening mm. in one spot. But the dance club was like 19 to get in. So it was a lot of like. Oh, dude, it was younger than Aggro that. dudes yeah. who couldn't buy drinks for ladies. It almost always. I, I'm not exaggerating. I've probably been in at least a dozen brawls at Cuckoo's, at this place she's talking about. Right. Just because somebody, because it's all these like high school cliques from all these towns. All these little towns, yeah. All mean mugging each other. My dad used to drop me off there. When, powder keg. Sunday was yeah. like teen night, and you would go, I mean, I was 14 years old going to Cuckoo's. And it was a lot, like, that was what was up. Cuckoos. But you would just be hanging out with all Cuckoos. these people. It was so much fun. I mean, the best music. God. Yeah, I want to go to a place that you still have to keep your own score. Yeah. We should go bowling. What's what? Like, are we all down? <sighs> I'm down. No time. No thanks. I have my no own time. bowl and shoes. Yeah, there's a bowling alley down the street. <laughs> right down here. I drove past it one day. Oh, yeah. Is we that could, like Olivet Lane? We could have a game uh, in yeah, by Olivet 11 Lanes. and be home. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, do this. <laughs> All right, Team Riz, remember the day is brought to you by Hot Shots Sports Bar and Grill. Proud sponsor, Team Riz. Visit hotshotsnet.com slash Team Riz from Belleville, Illinois. Mitchell Garcia is out. Yeah, Mitchell. Remember the day? Yeah. Mitchell Garcia. Uh, Mitchell has been a fan of the Riz Show for many years now and has met all the members of the show at multiple events. Uh, looks forward to starting off every single morning with the crew and the different topics of discussion. Loves Crab on Celebrities, Free of the Week, and Friday Fail Stories. Well, Mitchell Garcia from Belleville is our Team Riz member of the day. Get the super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up. 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. I love how we're all in, well, maybe not learn, but we're all in the uh, the point of our lives where we, we talk about hanging out. We like to talk about hanging yeah, out. I'm not hanging out with anybody. But then when somebody's like, let's do it, everybody goes, no, well, yeah. you know what? I, I'm, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to get activities. you guys to a bowling alley. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'm down. All right, Crab on Celebrities after the break. It's, all right, welcome back to the program. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams. 1057thepoint.com slash Riz the Socials. At R-I-Z-Z. Show your emails. Riz Show 1057thepoint.com. Send us your instant feedback through the 1057 The Point mobile app. Sex Time Fun Facts coming up. Sex Story of the Week. We'll give away some fabulous prizes. We'll play three and five later. Give away tickets to go see Event Sevenfold. We got tickets to go see Queens of the Stone Age. We got tickets to go see The Used. And tickets to go see Three Days Grace with Chevelle. Also, we'll talk Week 1 Football, <laughs> NFL, Riz Show, Fast Lane, Pick'em Challenge. Oh, boy. Man. I don't know how to be excited or Wild sad. Week. Wild week, yes. Week one is normally wild. Wild. Nine um, road wins. And I, I did declare uh, in the office earlier, I said, you know what? 
Uh, I'm looking at the standings. I'm looking at everybody finished. Um, I said, somebody's getting shot today. Oh, great. And you know what? I'm going to amend that. Mm. Whoa. What? Why? I'm going to amend that. Well, there's in there's something interesting to discuss then. There is something, because you can. There's a few options here. One, to look at this room, and the other, to look at the overall competition. Okay, so you can change your pick for the Monday night game. There's still one game to go. There's still one game to go for this week. Yeah. And that's the uh, the Jets game. Yeah. Jets, Bills. The tonight. Jets, Bills, tonight. One of the favorites versus Aaron Rodgers. Well, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets versus, you know, Super Bowl favorites, uh, you know, the Bills. Uh, so, okay. I have all the, I have all the breakdowns okay, if you want to discuss this now. At Jets, right? Uh, that Bills know, at Jets. Yes, they're, they're, in New, <clears throat> they're in New Jersey. And I will they're say, New, new quarterbacks with new teams fared very well this weekend. Right. Okay. Which so, I did not think would happen. <clears throat> uh, let's they, go. They with, were not great in preseason. Let's go with the fast lane first. Okay. I have everything. Okay. So as far as the fast lane goes, so there was there were fifteen games played so far. Mm -hmm. uh, week one yes. with one one game to go. So sixteen games altogether. Fifteen games were played. Um, go ahead, Moon. Okay. Let's see. As far as the fast lane goes, last place for the fast lane was Marsh, with eight. Okay, eight points for Marsh. Kerry Davis got nine. Uh huh. Brad Thompson ten. Uh huh. Jamie Rivers ten, and Anthony Stalter okay ten for a total of forty-seven points. Forty-seven. Dang. Forty-seven points now for the fast line. For the Monday game, all of them have the Bills except for one. Marsh has the Jets. Marsh has the Jets. Okay. Now, as far as the Riz Show goes, now this is for remember whoever comes in last place. For the Riz Show gets gets the punishment, the 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 airsoft gun, mm -hmm. yes. which would be one shot for this week. That's right. Okay, so winning the week is who? Winning the week with ten wins, King Scott. Congratulations, yeah. King Scott. Yeah. King Scott I wins the week. He picked ten of the uh, fifteen games correctly. Yes. You only lost five. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. And you have the Bills tonight. Yeah, that's the right. Bills he to has win. The Bills. Next. Wow. In second place with nine. Riz. Damn yeah, right. Okay, nice. Your hero. Also picking the Bills. Also picking the Bills. Tied for second place with nine. Learn. Hello, everybody. Oh. Congratulations, Learn. Thank you. In fourth place, me. With oh, eight. my gosh. Yeah, with eight Congratulations. Oh, no. So, last place, what Rafe has seven. By the way, we all have the Bills. Okay, everybody's picked the Bills. Now. Uh-uh. Not anymore. You could. Not anymore. <laughs> Check again. <laughs> okay, so you, you switch to the Jets, which is fine. Which is which is fine. And I have also, as of ten minutes ago, switched to the Jets. So now he checkmate. Oh boy. But I did not do it to block you. He's hedging his bets. Checkmate. I'll switch back. I did not do it to block you. You could switch you could go back and forth. Yes, we could. But here's the discussion. Best I could, best we could do is we both here's, get shot. Okay, right? no, no, here's, no, no, the here's, here's the discussion. Here's the discussion. Best I could do is share my agony. Okay, so so it's interesting because we do need to talk about tiebreaker things. If I bet opposite of you, so we both end up So for the leaderboard, even if we both tie, they have like some system like who was closer and blah 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 blah, and there is a point system and it does differ. There's a tiebreaker on the tonight's game score. Yeah, but yes. that, but that's yeah, but that that's for whatever. There is like a points thing. It'll say like ten wins plus ten, or there there is a thing. So, are we going to just go strictly on the wins number and have ties and dole out multiple shots, or are we going to no. have one loser well, every one time, loser. depending on the what the leader? One loser. Can't we do the old pick where whoever's closest to the actual correct scores? And that's what that does. That's that that's weighs what into the system it. does. Either that's way, that's why you pick the final score. The system has a thing. I mean, like right now, Riz and Learn both have nine wins, but Riz is considered. Ahead of learn, and I don't know what I forgot what the breakdown is, but this system has some sort of thing where you have like a plus forty and she has a plus thirty five. I, I think that'll change once we get the Monday Night Football game in. And, I'm, and I'm just asking: see, Are we going to have one loser? Every one time? loser. One loser. Okay, so whatever the board says, one loser. Last, whatever the board says. Here's so, where, here's where the strategy comes in. Currently, the fast lane has forty seven, and we have forty three. So we're Meaning, down by four. If four of them have the bills as they do. And five of us have the Jets and the Jets win. We will at least tie Ooh. tie them. Mm. Yeah. So should we switch? I say absolutely. Okay. 
But then that gives them the chance to, to also throw blocks and, and different things as well. And they could switch later today as well. We should have but then not all they would have to do. <laughs> but then well, they would be at our risk. Work. But then they would be at, at risk of maybe getting last and not having Marsh shot one of them shot. Mm. So there's there's. There's some working to be done here. Do both teams, both Fastlane and us, their lowest denominator yeah. on the team will get, get shot? They get shot. Okay. Yeah. So Man, as of we now, talked Marsh, about that. Yeah, as of now, Marsh is supposed to be shot and Raven. I think we should all switch to the Jets. Hmm. I already did. I have, an, just, I have a decision to make. Yes, you do. Do I play the room to save my own ass, or do I play, mm. do I take, here comes do Bob I acquiesce? Seager. Do I acquiesce? That is the decision. My own booty for the good of the tribe. That is a decision you will have to make on your own. Uh, ah. <laughs> and uh, I could I could change my pick all the way up to game time tonight. Wow. Yes, you can. So I'm gonna see what the I'm gonna see what the Vegas like are. Like a rock. <laughs> like a rock. Uh, I tell you what, the Bills were only. It looks like the line is minus two. So it's a it's it's not like the Bills winning is a guarantee. Mm -mm. The only juggernaut that really the Bills are giving two points. Yeah, but they're serving. That's less than a field goal. So what do you want, what, what do you want to do here? As far as captain goes, you you want to try you want to, I mean, are we trying to win this thing or are we trying to win this thing? You know what I'm saying? As captain, I would say, go Jets. <laughs> sorry, Rafe, your ass is on the line. You're gonna get shot tomorrow. Unless I pick the Bills. And go against and, you all pick and the go Jets. against the team. And then we lose for the week. <laughs> what if I don't win? But I but Moon gets shot. I like must get a better I score. If I stay in the Bills, then I could get ten points, which would also help the it team. Doesn't. I mean I'm you and I are You would win in the second. room, but we would lose overall. Yeah, you can't you winning in the room does not lose. matter. You it's could just beat not Riz. losing. You can't lose. I mean, if you want, you're to good either way. No, it matters so in I this don't room. have to change, or do you want me to change? I would like you to change. change. I would like us all to change. So this way, we can at least tie. Mm -hmm. The captain would if like they you don't to, make but you don't their... have to. You don't have to. This is this is. A, I mean, this is your. If butt. you don't change, it will be noted. Okay. <laughs> what? No, don't no, put the pressure no, on him. Like, make it. I'm putting all the pressure on him. Let him make the decision. Hey, get your notepad out. You should have let him make the decision. The lipstick on the mirror list. Get it out. All right. So look, make a note to see who he is. I'm right now changing my pick. And don't, don't forget. I don't, know. I don't, don't, don't forget. It, changing. it will ask you the score, and you have to change your score, because clearly your score had the Bills winning. Now your score has to reflect the Jets I'm winning, because it will allow you to put in the wrong. I'm numbers. changing. I'm changing. I'm going with the Jets. Don't we need some people to stay behind with the Bills? No, not if they. No, all, not if, if we want to tie. If they all stay with the Bills, but we don't know what. But we'll they're keep a do. watch on them. We're, we're going to assume that matter. they're not awake right now, and they're not paying attention. But we'll keep a watch on it, and we'll adjust as the day goes. Somebody's already emailed them. Stalter takes his kids to school, and they learn about the porno birthday. So they are awake. They are in the car right now. Stalters are listening. Yeah, but their ego's on the line. They think that they've already got the seal, which they might. I just changed. I've the just Bills changed are the favorite. The, Jets. Okay, the Bills I'm switching are the mine to Buffalo Jets. They should stay with the Bills, for sure. Rafe, do what you want to do. I'm recommending you change your, your thing. Well, <laughs> you I got to tell you, I think they're going to hear this, change one of their picks. It's a foregone conclusion. I might as well save my own. And perhaps m perhaps they change their picks. And right before the game, we see what their picks are. Yeah, and, and, we'll we just, and we switch again. We'll just well, somebody monitor. Mm. We'll just see how selfish you are, Rafe. <laughs> I guess we will. Somebody I guess the, we will. Somebody in the, the chat says, now he's hey. All the pressure is on him. I know. I, you should have let him I, do I, what he was doing. I asked do. myself this question. What would Riz do? What would Riz do? WWRD. Uh, for the team. Somebody already said in the chat, Fast Lame cheated last year and they didn't deserve to win. So who's to say that they're not going to cheat the their way the past, I'm, not, I'm not looking backwards. Mine's been updated. Uh, I've made my switch to the Jets. Scott, tonight, will you? can you monitor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? Like, what does that mean? So, like, like before the, the game? game? Before game time, just check and see. So, yeah, and put out an emergency. Emergency text! To the group. If they switch to the Jets. The Jets talking about how they didn't do the shots last year. We we know that, we, but, but they, promi they promise that they're they're that's doing it this year. So we're taking them at their word. I'm just letting like, you know, I put, I, I've put i now picked the Jets. I, All right, I'm going to be monitoring our chat, and then if I need to do something, I'm still sticking with Bills. And we'll change as needed. Last minute, you're going to, what? Yeah. That's dangerous. Why? It doesn't matter what you do. Oh, well then, okay. 
change yours to the Jets. It doesn't matter. Anything yeah. can happen. You're though. safe. You're somebody, safe. You're you good and to I go. are safe. Somebody pointed out this. Scott's I forgot safe. my Stalter was a disaster last year. And she now, doesn't know her password. <laughs> and now he's first. And Marsh was incredible last year, and now he's last. So okay, it's week one. Any, hey, and I'm it's just saying, week any, one. anything week can happen. One. Dude, I'll tell you this. None of the juggernauts except save the 49ers showed up. 49ers look Some so of the good. slam dunk teams that you're like, oh, these are like coming off of deep playoff runs. They're going to win. Hands down, got trounced. Bengals got trounced. Chiefs lost. Uh, Chargers got beat at home. Pittsburgh didn't even show up. Gary on the uh, and it's feedback says there should be a rule, no pick changing this year. And I I kind of agree with that, but, but what the are you system do? works. The system works that I and I don't know Danny changing picks is stupid. You're you're right. Yeah, we, but we, the we system the the system sucks. <laughs> All right, pick this. The whatever system we switch to sucks. It's terrible. I don't like it. And Fastlane took advantage of it last year. This is the only way I do football. I have a feeling, okay? I, the reason I'm in second <laughs> I place... I got a feeling. I had a feeling. I look at what's going on. I don't know what it means. I go, I feel like this team's going to win. And that's how I do. All right, oh, which... So now you are telling me what to do, and you're ruining my energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're upset with us? I got to be able to just do what I need to do. But... If you're but not listening you're to the stats... But we're a team. No, I know, but well, you okay. can't me just winning right. is going to help Listen, the team. We'll, we'll, we'll table this. We'll talk about it in the office. But you're not listening to the fact that math. You've already won. Yeah, yeah. You you're beat good. the room. I you're can't good. catch you. He can't catch you. Your ass is safe in the room. I know. We're doing a yeah, total point tally against them. They've all picked Buffalo. So Except for one. If Buffalo wins, they're good. They've are and they're already beating us by four. Uh huh. If we all switch and the Jets happen to win, we gain four points on them. And we will tie. And we will tie. And that's what we want. Which, which is for the good overall, for the overall at competition. The end. Well, I'm just so sorry because I feel like, again, my wish Oh, my feeling, God. The Bills are going to win tonight. So I yeah, switched to the Jets. It doesn't matter. I switched. <laughs> You're ruining the energy. It's fine. <laughs> no, this is a ruin. I like I love, This is great. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> If I you switch won. and she you doesn't, won. I'm going to be super pissed. I have switched. Because it gains nothing for me. I got the Jets. You won. You win. Either way, it's not, it's, not like, it's not like I switched to what you already had. So at least, Rafe, we both got that. We're switching the same. You know? Thank you, Rafe, yeah. for your sacrifice. Uh, bills by four. <laughs> Tomorrow you're going you're getting to be put on our shoulders. We'll All right, you around. Yeah. On the shoulders of Giants. <laughs> um, all right. Today is uh, September 11th. Back in the day, 56 years ago, 1967, The Carol Burnett Show premieres. It ran for 11 seasons, won 25 primetime Emmys. 49 years ago, 1974, Little House on the Prairie debuts on TV, starring the great Michael Landon. How did Michael Landon die? Uh, he died either. young, didn't he? Anybody yeah, ever he watch did. A Highway to Heaven? Oh, yeah. yeah dude, what sure a show. Did. Do you ever watch the speed reading stuff? Michael Landon speed reading? Dude, he no. had these infomercials about speed reading, and I really wanted no. that. Uh, he used to, uh, I read it. He used to pull, to cry on Little House on the Prairie. He used to pull his nose hairs. Oh, really? Well, that was his secret. He had pancreatic cancer. No kidding. Uh, 46 years ago, 1977, I had one of these. The Atari 2600 was released. Whoa. Had some Tetris on that? Oh, oh this is no. way before Tetris. Oh. Rich kid. Tetris yeah, would have long. Tetris would have made our head explode yeah. on Atari 2600. <laughs> Combat. All right, 36 years ago, 1987, while a tennis uh, tennis tournament ran overtime, Dan Rather, news guy, stormed off the set of the CBS Evening News. He was pissed that the, his news was being preempted because of tennis. Tennis coverage ended. Dan Rather nowhere to be found. So the network went black for six minutes. Whoa. 32 years ago, I'm sorry, 33 years ago, 1990, Warrant releases their second record, Cherry Pie. 21 years ago, 2002, Nick Nolte's mugshot becomes an internet sensation when he's arrested on suspicion of drunken driving. It seems he was on that date rape drug. Everyone knows that famous Nick Nolte mugshot. His hair's all crazy. Uh, 20 years ago, 2003, <clears throat> John Ritter dies suddenly and unexpectedly of a previously undetected heart ailment called aortic dissection after collapsing on the set of his uh, ABC show, Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter. He was 54. And on that same day, 2003, Tommy Chong 
one half of Cheech and Chong, sentenced to nine months in federal prison, fined twenty thousand dollars for selling drug paraphernalia over the internet, and of course, twenty two years ago today, two thousand one at eight forty six a.m. and nine oh three a.m., two hijacked planes were crashed into the World Trade Center. Uh, two other suicide flights crashed at the Pentagon and in the woods of uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. A total of 2,792 people died. In the World Trade Center attacks, 184 innocent people died. In the Pentagon attack, including those on the plane, and 40 died in the plane that crashed into Pennsylvania. And I think about this date, obviously, every, every, every year on September 11th, I'm transported right back to New York City. Uh, what a gorgeous day it was and the events of that day. I even just got a chill reading mm -hmm. that whole thing. So that's what happened back in the day. Yeah, I remember that day I had uh, the day off. Mm. Wow. I had the day off because our <clears throat> refrigerator was being delivered. Me and my roommate and uh, my now wife were at my apartment. Um, obviously the chaos surrounding the day, but that fridge still got delivered. Really? That fridge Crazy. still came. In all the chaos of September 11th in New York City, there was a knock on the door saying, hey, I got your fridge here. What? Wow. Okay. Did you write right a good way. review? Right this way. This is pre-Yelp, Pre-Yelp. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you crazy, what, last man. night was, uh, shout out to Queen Latifah. I don't know if you guys watched that Giants-Cowboys game, but man, she crushed the National Anthem. Yeah. With yeah. like the military orchestra. Yeah, it was amazing. And they were kind of flashing to ground zero. The memoriam, mm -hmm. the memorial and stuff, and it was it was really it was awesome. She crushed it, man. Yeah, my wife and I finally went down to that uh, a couple years back. Went down to the. Uh... That was the last time I got choked up in public, because yeah, it is heavy. over. Going there is very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like it having is. experienced it as a Midwestern American, and then going to the memorial. It was been a few years ago when I went, but it was very uh, it was a very emotional thing to see all the. The, the people that still had like missing family members hanging all the all the the, the flyers hanging all over the wall and yeah they have these and you saw where the footprints of the old towers oh yeah seeing the, the scope pools. of the towers missing and things wow. like that uh yeah it took a while for my wife and i to go down there sure uh and we did a couple years ago and it was really it's heavy it's, it's yeah heavy. it's a heavy tourist attraction and sure. i got i think i may have told this when i came back on the air i got pissed off i didn't say anything but I was mad that people were kind of skipping around there and taking selfies and smiling. You know, they have uh, 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 surrounding the reflecting pools mm -hmm. where the footprints of the old uh, Twin Towers were, um, the names of the people that perished right. around in a ring. Uh, and some people will stick flowers in there, you know, for loved ones. Um, and just people kind of skipping around and joking and and laughing and taking selfies. And yeah. I don't know, it, it, it angered me. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, because I was feeling all these emotions while I was down there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a, kind of a place for a solemn reflection. Yeah. Not, when I was there, it had, a, it had more of a somber tone. So I'm glad I didn't. I didn't witness any of that. So that's mm. I must have went on a good day. Yeah. The museum was wild too. Like the, I went through the museum of 9/11. So it had pieces of the planes and like lots of like backstories on folks. And I was like, man, this is. My heart got heavy in my chest. It was like a weird, because you are in the middle of this like hustling, bustling yeah. city, and it's almost like this weird like that area. Yeah, it was almost like it had like its a own weird, place. Yeah, it has its own vibe, like its own it, gravity. Yes, yeah. like it had its own center of gravity. That's a great way to explain it. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best, flush the rest. BrightHouseCo.com six three six six hundred zero one eight eight. Well, Ashton Kutcher had himself a hell of a week last week. First of all, Sharon Osbourne said that he was one of the most rudest celebrities she'd ever encountered. And then this video comes out. Ashton Kutcher and his wife, Mila Kunis, they've apologized after the letters they wrote to the judge of Danny Masterson's sexual assault trial asking for leniency. Um, they, they wrote letters defining his character. They knew him for 25 years, obviously working on the set of that 70s show. And so they were asked as ones are sometimes asked in a case can you vouch for this person's character right so the defense will ask friends and family to write letters to the judge you know kind of begging for leniency in the sentencing well those letters 
were leaked out, and right. then they went to press. And so um, following Masterson's sentencing to the maximum, 30 years to life for rape, the letters from that 70s show co-stars leaked, causing huge backlash against the couple. And so they took it upon themselves to release this video. And I watched it. Somber video. They are not happy that uh, first they were leaked, but also that they have to come to their own defense in this and say, look, we knew this person for 25 years. We, of course, stand with victims um, of sexual assault. And Ashton Kutcher, I believe, was the one in the video who said, if you look at our history as people, we've actually stood and testified against other predators, you know, for, I believe, children. Um, that was the big knock children. is that he's huge voice in sex trafficking, but then right. wrote a letter for Vouching for a friend. Yeah. For, you know, they've been friends for a long time. Sure. Uh, did Ashton Kutcher witness any of the sex assault stuff? I mean, it's a... No, I would no. say no. No, he was he was he was asked to write a letter. There was a character reference from what he knew of this guy, and that's, sure. what, and that's what he did. It was supposed to be for the judge's eyes. This is what he's being asked to do. That's what he did. In the letter, Kutcher calls Masterson a role model. In the video posted on Instagram on Saturday, Ashton Kutcher says, we are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We've done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. Ashton Kutcher explains that Masterson's family reached out to them to write character letters to represent the person that they knew for the last 25 years. And he says the letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the juror's ruling. Um, they were intended for the judge to read and not to undermine the testimony of victims or re-traumatize them in any way. And one of the alleged victims came out and said... Um, that Ashton Kutcher is just as sick as Danny Masterson, and Mila Kunis should get therapy because of the way wow. both guys treated her while she was a minor on that 70s show. Treated Mila Kunis? Yes. Well, wouldn't that be for Mila Kunis to say? You would think. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big old mess. Like so. She was like 14, right? She was. She, she was, was much younger than the rest young. of the cast. Didn't she get on lying about her age? Was that like the... Maybe. I don't know. Was that the, the legend? She said she was 16 or something like said that. She, yeah, said she was 16 and... Uh, and how old were they when, when this show? I've never seen the show. They're like 18 and up. Okay. That was everyone a good show. was, yeah, I think Everybody everyone was, was over 18 and she was like 14. Her first kiss was on that show. Like she's come out and said that before. I, and which I think it was with Ashton Kutcher on the show. Like obviously a part huh. of the, the writing and consensual and all that, but. Interesting. Yeah. She was much younger than everybody else. <sighs> I mean, it's a, what a tough. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, a writer, for, speaking of opinions, a writer for Slate Magazine wrote an op-ed saying that M Martin Short sucks at comedy and is desperately unfunny. He said, quote, I find his whole shtick exhausting, sweaty, desperately unfunny. Every time he dresses up in a silly outfit or says something outrageous or mugs for the audience, I want to shout at the screen, why are you being like this? I'm wondering this? what the point of this article was, just to crap on Martin Short. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah what, really, is this a comedian who wrote it, or what's his I'd deal? love to hear the list of this guy's... Who he Comedic loves. credentials. Mm -hmm. Well, or, I, no, I want to know who he likes. Right. I mean, Martin Short is like the vaudeville persona. He's so loved in too this, in this day and age. But it's like, I mean, it's full blown vaudeville guy. I mean, that's 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 what he is. That's, that's what he's giving you. Even if you don't like that brandy humor, I don't understand the purpose of writing this article. Right. Like, to it's, just well, crap it's on. It's not for you, but it has a place clearly. I think what he's and I haven't read the article, but this is like the headline. But uh, Conan O'Brien needs a friend. That podcast. John Mulaney came back as the guest, and I was listening to it over the weekend, and they actually get into how great Martin Short is because of how terrible he is to his friends. Like he comes, you know, anytime he would come on the Conan O'Brien show, it's he nice. would be so mean to him. Yes. And so somebody put is. together like a montage of every time Martin Short was on Conan and the terrible things that Martin Short would say to him. And it's like one punch after the other. And Martin Short told Conan, like, I actually feel really bad seeing them one after the other, even though it's all with love and it's their relationship. Right. It's, you know, it's like, uh, what's his name? Yeah, but uh, when Mr. You Insult. Yeah. When you montage anybody like that. No, John. Uh, John, uh, uh, Don Rickles. Don Rickles. Yeah, Don Rickles or Jonathan Winters or something like like. Are these all bad people because part of their shtick when they're on an entertainment show is right. like crapping on their friends? Like that's, I mean, careers were made for this. Sure. Who doesn't like Martin Short? Well, a bunch of people came to his defense. Ben Stiller said, quote, Martin Short is a comedic ge genius. End of story. To which Adam Devine commented, quote, 
Was this ever even a question? Mark Hamill posted photos of Martin's different roles and said, quote, hard to believe people are actually debating whether or not Martin Short is funny. Newsflash, he is hilarious. 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 Uh, John Cusack said, I don't know what people are on about regarding Martin Short, but his Mr. Rogers boxing match is my fave. So nobody's really Dude. paying attention to hey, is it He's so inoffensive, too. I know. I know. Is, it, is it weird? And he's lovely. That we're like in this weird uh, point in the world where... We also have to like everybody. Like everybody yeah. has to be no, nice. No, you don't have to like. You, you know what I'm saying? You don't have like, to like everybody. No, but I'm saying like somehow people are good or not good depending on how nice people think they are or aren't. And that's freaking weird to me. Yeah. That's weird to me. It's okay to not like like people. This happened just last week, like on Friday. Some people in the chat were like getting up on my ass. That's cool. Hey, I'm not gonna get offended, man. I'm not for everybody. That's how you have to kind of approach this, which is exactly how Martin Short is probably approaching this as well. Like, he doesn't care that this guy wrote this story unless one of his good friends is like, yeah, you know what? You actually I don't know. If somebody him. wrote that about me, I would go, hmm, that's because Esquire, it was Esquire magazine. It's pretty it's big. Still, yeah. Like, like what, what's the deal with this guy? Also, but then to see all these people coming to your defense is it's awesome. great. Nice. But at yeah. the same time, it's like <clears throat> some of that vitriol and stuff. It's like, what was the point of this article? That's what I'm saying. What was your goal? Other than probably what you're getting, which is you're you're so wrong, you're so objectively wrong that everyone's come out of the woodwork to call you an idiot, and now you're getting lots of traffic to the Esquire website to read how stupid you are. Is it, it was, was this that goal, your goal? Was this goal to hurt Martin Short's feelings? Maybe, but why would you? Why it was an opinion. It was him, and also it's okay that he has an opinion that he doesn't it like is. Martin Short. He's it's wrong. Also okay, if and it's some, if totally fine if some people are unlikable. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like Comedy's, it's okay. Martin Short's not for everybody. That's Comedy right. is subjective, too. It's the only art form that, and this happens all the time. Like, if I said, hey, you guys want to go to a music show? You'd be like, what kind of music? But with comedy, people don't do that. They yeah. think it's like a one-size-all. It's supposed to be a glove that fits everyone, and it's not. Like, if you'd like Jim Gaffigan and you go see Doug Stanhope, you may not have a good time. But that doesn't mean Doug Stanhope isn't a genius or Doug, you know what I mean? Right. And vice versa. It's if you subjective. like super crazy, cutting-edge biting so political commentary and you wander into a Brian Regan show, that doesn't mean you won't enjoy Brian Regan, but it's not going to be your cup of tea. It's like, it's such a weird thing. We had a long rambling email from somebody this weekend that was like crapping on us for not crapping harder on Jimmy Fallon. And I was like, we weren't even having that conversation about whether he's funny. We were having a conversation about what his work environment was like. Mm -hmm. And he left this big, long rambling list of all these people he thought was funnier than Jimmy Fallon. And I'm like, yeah, man, all these people are dead. Like, they're all, clearly you're an old guy who likes what he likes. You're, In Living Color was your most recent reference, which is fine. Those <laughs> yeah, things were great. great. Homie yeah. the Clown was great. Fire yeah, Marshal Bill. Burns. But rules. just like music, there's a cutoff in comedy where people stop. They like who they like. They like the cast of SNL when they were 13 to 15 years old. And everyone after that is some talentless hack who's come along. And I'm like, there's always a breakout star. There's always going to be. That's why that mm -hmm. show's been on for 50 years. And everybody's doing something different for a different yeah. time. I mean, even George Carlin had like yeah, three or four different types. I mean, he was trying yeah. to make it, and then he found his thing. Sure. And that's how you know him. It doesn't mean that's exactly who he is and or bro, how he is. When Steve Martin and Martin Short host the Oscars, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. Murder Short's, in the Building is hilarious. Martin Short's awesome. Clifford, go back and watch Clifford. It was ahead of its time when he plays like a oh, little kid. Oh, gosh, yeah. It's dark. With the dad it's from hilarious. I mean, come on, all the, all the Martin Short stuff, Egg, from Ed Grimley yeah. to Father to of the Jimmy, Bride. Jimmy Glick, yeah. Jimmy Glick was Three hilarious. Amigos. But we're so connected into with their personalities, too. Like, back in the day, everybody knew that Frank Sinatra was this kind of guy or heard mm. that he was. But nobody cared because it was like... They're entertaining us and barring any sort of criminal activity or something like that. Like, I don't care who they are. Mm -mm. I, I care what they do to entertain and me. And Father of the Bride, Franck, right? Franck. Franck. He's mm -hmm. the best. The, the nice thing is this editorial. French uh, wedding planner. This editorial, that, you know, it's trying to get his name out there and really build up his brand. And uh, we don't even know the guy's name. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about his story, but we have no clue who he is. What, and, what? and uh, but yeah, I think maybe he's jealous of Glick being a better. Uh, interviewer? If yeah. You, if interviewer. you read a story that, I don't know, who's your favorite actor? Who's your favorite actor? I don't know. I have no, I have no idea. Okay, let's say your Ashton favorite Kutcher. actor is, uh, let's say your favorite <laughs> actor is Henry Winkler. Yes. You're, better really one than Barry. you're listening, you're watching Barry right now only because of Henry, Henry, Henry Winkler. And then you hear that he might be a meanie. He, he might be a, a, he's a, he's not a nice guy. He's not, we'll say he's not a nice guy. He's not that style of a guy. Does that make you not want to watch his movies? 
I don't know. It could take the shine off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he wore a Kevin. pleather coat. And don't you think that's maybe kind of weird? And we should like go. Wait a second. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I give you the case of Kevin Spacey. There's no way to know. But Kevin Spacey, we're talking about something like potentially really damaging to another human. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm not that he a, was not, cleared of. Just because somebody's not uh, the style of a nice guy, <laughs> or or like you know, just oh, he's so charming and nice. Uh, and I don't know. Henry Winkler's microaggressions. Missing the point. <laughs> no, well, I, the point. I hope Martin Short I, wins I, I uh, People's Sexiest Man of 2023 and really has Ooh. redemption because guys, <laughs> the voting is open. You can vote right now. We're going to put it up on the blog. Now, it's not just the sexiest man of the year. There's all sorts of other fun categories. Let me tell you about this. Sexiest TV and movie star. Sexiest TikTok star. Sexiest first time dad. Sexiest grandpa. And there's hey! even a category, right. the sexiest Ken. So buckle up. Is there any uh, sexiest radio producer? Of course not. Okay. Um, oh. What is this for? Grandpa. This is people's uh, sexiest uh, okay. man alive. So you get to vote. Voting is now open. Voting is now open. So get up on it. Yep. Uh, we've all seen the movie right Halloween, now. the Taking original. The Right? The original Halloween, Jamie mm -hmm. Lee Curtis. Uh, years ago. Sure. Uh, Lori Strode's house from Halloween hit the market, $1.8 million. However, it's not in Haddonfield, Illinois, because that's a fictional town. It's in L.A. So if you want to go buy that, that'd be great. A new biography on Elon Musk claims that he and Grimes secretly welcomed a third baby, a son named Techno... Mechanicus. Mechanicus. <laughs> and I had, I had to read it like three times. All right. Techno Mechanicus. Mechanicus. Yes going to be out on September 12th. Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman's cause of death was revealed to be respiratory failure. He had metastatic uh, lung cancer as a result of his acute myelogenous le uh, leukemia, which is a cancer of blood and bone marrow. Um, in music, ACDC is going to be performing at Power Trip Festival in Indio, California on October 7th. They will do so without longtime drummer Phil Rudd. He's being replaced by uh, Matt Logg, uh, who has gone on tour with Alanis Morissette, Alice Cooper, and Slash's Snake Pit. Uh, but they also made the announcement via social media that bassist Cliff Williams is coming out of retirement for the festival. So good news there. Um, finally. And finally, Here we go. the NFL season has begun, so that means yes, we're trashing another list. This one is from Entertainment Weekly, the best football movies of all time. Okay, here Easy. we go. <laughs> best football movies of all time. Uh, what's the uh, Oliver Stone one? Any Given Sunday. Any Given Sunday. Number seven. Uh, Very number good seven. job. I didn't think that would be number one. I knew that would no. be on the list. It's Remember the Titans or Rudy. Nope. I know number one for sure is 80 for Brady. <laughs> That's a good guess, Scott, but no, that did not make the list. Okay. Um, Rudy is number two. Uh, number two. All right. Hey, Rudy getting it. Yeah, way to go, Rudy. I'm going to say not number, one. number one, Jerry Maguire. Ooh. Number one is Jerry Maguire. Oh, Dang. Dang. It was uh, Friday Night Lights. Remember, the Titans was way down the list. This is like top 25. Whoa. They were like Friday Night Lights, 20. you said. That's what about I love Invincible? That Friday Night Lights is number four. Invincible is uh, on the list, but not top 10. The original Longest Yard. Yeah. Uh, from 1974, Burt Reynolds, number eight. Very good. What about the remake? Is that on the list? <laughs> I don't think The so. long, uh, no, it's, it's not. Funny. It's funny. Uh, it's funny. Waterboy. Is there any comedies on this? Waterboy? Adam Sandler. Uh, Waterboy is. Not on the list. Uh, what about the replacements? What about oh. the one with and the Matt? longest yard is on the list with Adam Sandler way down. Didn't didn't Matthew Fox make one that that people liked? Green the, uniforms. Brian Song. Brian Song is it. on the list, not top ten. So there's comedies on the there. replacements wasn't on there. The replacements. That was with Gene Hackman, I believe. That one's uh, a great Keanu one. Reeves. Yep. Yeah. Not on the list. What about the Mark Wahlberg where he's in Eagles? Uh, That's an invincible. That. That's oh, one Man, How about uh, the program? No, which no, shouldn't be chips. on there, but yeah. some no, people that, like it. Blue that. chips basketball. That was basketball. basketball. That was Nick Nolte. Yeah. Uh, he was drop kicking basketballs. You said, we shot, already dude. said Rudy was two. Mm -hmm. What are we missing? What numbers in the top? Uh, Will 10? Smith is in the third movie. Oh, that's the concussion one. Concussion from 2015. We are Marshall is the movie I was trying to. We think are Marshall is on the list, but not top ten. You're missing a 1999 Blindside. Necessary Roughness. Blindside is on the list, but not top 10. <laughs> you already said that, dude. He's <laughs> really riding this Necessary Roughness. <laughs> <laughs> say it a third time, man, and maybe... Oh, I didn't know I said and that. Oh, I thought he will appear. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's... And kick you in the oh, ball. Oh, say it. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yes. Little Giants. Little Giants is number 25. Oh, 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 oh that really rules, dude. 
Uh, what's the old uh, What's the old Ronald Reagan? Win one for the Gipper. What's that old school? Oh, oh, time yeah. for bonds no, up. No. Uh, American Underdog. No. Somebody said radio. The no. Kurt Warner movie? That movie <laughs> stuck, dude. That movie was so bad. Okay. I wanted it to be good. It was so. I watched it on a plane and was like, what the hell is this? I heard they showed hardly any football stuff. It, it wasn't was that much. Clearly written by his wife. Oh, uh, really? It was a puff piece? <laughs> what? So that was a Brenda. Brenda. Uh, a Brenda, Brenda Warner. Warner production. I saw that on a plane, too. Uh, what about this movie? A uh, Warren Beatty was in it from 1978. Uh, did you say the one that Heaven uh, Can Wait? I don't know that one. I never heard of that. Did you did, did you say the one with the There's a mug in there? It's a Kevin Costner film or something. Uh, Varsity Blues. Varsity Blues is number ten. Draft Day. Ooh. Draft Day. Yeah. Say that. Oh, Draft Day. Draft Day Kevin was on Costner? the list. Yeah, that was good, man. That was the mug that's in the kitchen. That's a good movie. Wow. We're missing what? Five? You guys are missing five and nine. Five and nine. Five and nine. And I, to be honest with you, not that it means anything because I don't watch these movies, but I've never heard of these movies before. Well, Give me a year. You said Varsity Blues? I had Varsity Blues on there. Okay. That's number 10. Huh. Give me a year. 1992. David Green. 1992. Dave, who's David Green? I don't know. That's right around the time <laughs> for the program. It's a movie that had like uh, Wesley Snipes and Wildcats. No. And Woody Harrelson. It's like their first, they were like high schoolers in it. Why don't you just tell us what uh, it is? It is called School Ties. Oh, oh School, school to Brendan Fraser. Oh, oh Brendan I didn't Frazier. even. I forgot that was a football thing. And then number five came out in 2002, Monday Night Mayhem. Ever heard of it? Never heard of it. I don't know that one. That. So again, Varsity Blues, School Ties, The Must Longest Yard from 74, Any Given Sunday, Heaven Can Wait, Monday Night Mayhem, Friday Night Lights, Concussion, Rudy, and your number one football movie of all time is Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Mm. Celebrity celebrating a birthday today, Tyler Hecklund. Uh, it's Clark Kent on Superman and Lois, and Supergirl is 36. Charles Kelly, that's Lady A singer, 42. Ludacris is 46. Taraji P. Henson is 53. Harry Connick Jr. is 56. Moby is 58. Christy McNichol, that's Barbara Weston on the Golden Girls. Uh, the, uh, the, Empty Nest. The, the Empty Nest spinoff, that's right. She's 61. John Moss, the Culture Club drummer and Boy George's ex-boyfriend, is 66. Tommy Shaw, Sticks guitar player, is 70. Amy Madigan, anybody know who that is? Amy Madigan. She Amy is Madigan there. is Kevin Costner's wife in Fields of Dreams. Oh, I'm thinking oh. Kathleen Madigan. Yeah. Amy Madigan is 73, and Mickey Hart, the Grateful Dead drummer, is 80 years old. All right, today's porno birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is Lexi Summers. And today's birthday girl has been in 20 fine films. Not that many, but she made a, a definite impact. She was in Battle Bang, 3, 5, and 8, Big Naturals, 19, Bigger, Badder, Fatter, 3, Cash for Chunkers, 3 and 5, <laughs> Chunky Chicks, 48, Hot Sexy Plumpers, 37, and who could forget a role in 2010's Scale Bustin' Babes 37? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Whole lot of Lexi Summers is 32 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays. And that was your crap on celebrities. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll give away some stuff. We'll play three and five as we do every Monday. So Moon's going to give you a category. You name three things in that category within five seconds. Two out of three categories, right? You win your choice of tickets. Tickets to go see Avenged Sevenfold with Falling in Reverse. Uh, just a couple weeks, the 25th over at the Hollywood Casino Abbey Theater. We got tickets to go see The Used at St. Louis Music Park on the 22nd. Tickets to go see Queens of the Stone Age on the 23rd at St. Louis Music Park. And tickets to go see Three Days Grace with Chevelle Wednesday night, September 20th at St. Louis Music Park. If you want to play three and five, 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Remember, no ums or ahs to start your answer. We'll play next. What? This whole, what was going on on this side of the room during the commercial break? <laughs> What's your freaking plants? We're talking about plants. I was Who going cares my about? Shutters. Wait, and then shutters. Home update. You're painting your shutters, and Love you already it. got your Halloween decorations out. Which I do. Is killing me. Guess what? No, I didn't get all of them out. But hey, I finally, I told him, I go, look, I'm giving you 24 hours notice. Sunday, it's all happening. Started bringing things out. My husband, hang on. My husband went to Home Depot. What did he come back with? Two pumpkins. Yeah. Wait for that. We're starting an exploder over here. That's right. Week. Yeah. <laughs> we have all of our Halloween stuff. We got plants. We're, we're just like, we're just loving the season. No, it's too early for Halloween. Sorry we're having such a good time with life. My it's house way, is... It's way too early for Halloween. Freddy Krueger's walking the Way too early. I Am just, I right? Oh, hey, man, we just love life. <laughs> I love life, too. But every as holiday as we has do. its time. <laughs> You're too early. They have Christmas stuff out in You're stores right now. You're too early. Also too early. Way too early. I know. You can buy the Christmas stuff. But don't show it to anybody. 
Yeah. <laughs> I went to Home Goods yesterday, dropped a hundred dollars. Nice. And I got all sorts of stupid crap. If I'm seeing it's it's okay. It's not even the middle of September. Stupid crap. Halloween stuff is for October. I might nice. have a witch party. Halloween's October first. You're free to put anything out you want. Halloween. October Halloween first, later. man. October first. Life's too short. Do whatever you want. You have yeah, thir- you have, dude. dude. You, you have wanna, a whole month. I want all the Ouija boards out. I want my tarot you have a whole stuff. Month my of, black of cat. Halloween. Your rules do not apply to my home. No. You absolutely can't not. have Halloween. I mean, no rules, bro. Oh, rules. No, there are, we live. Life's too has, short for society rules. Society has man. rules, man. Society has I, rules. And I'm going to really piss you off now. I bought a new salt lamp, and this thing is huge. This thing, I'm going to take a picture of it tonight and send it to the group. Which, what do you mean? I don't know. What's salt, salt lamp? They got the light bulbs. You know, the big old yeah, salt, the, the rock Himalayan, salt. The, the, yeah, the Himalayan, Himalayan salt. Himalayan pink salt lamp. And it, it's this total perfect it's like soft salt? light. Yeah, yeah, it's real salt. Oh. I found I one. fake. No, mm-hmm. some of Go them are on. pink. <laughs> Here. So no. you put a bulb up, underneath. Up and, up and a, normally oh, they're man. pink, right? Yeah, sure. I found one around. that is like yeah. gray. Okay. Okay. It was fourteen dollars at oh, Home cool. Goods. Mm. They all were in different sizes. Because you hit me. How big? I mean, huge. This thing is massive. 12, 15 inches. Wow, that is big. That's I'll tell you what. Said. I don't know. Seeing Halloween <laughs> decorations now. I took a nice walk around the subdivision <clears throat> with my wife yesterday, and there are some people that were actually out yesterday putting up the gravestones in the front in the front yard. Uh, oh, the decorations it's... were out. You know, the hand sticking out of the front yard. It's too early. Way too it's early. It's September 10th. <laughs> That's not too early. Let me show you what I bought at Lowe's the other day. It's, it's still early. like, it's too green. There's yeah. too many leaves on the trees. You're killing the vibe. You're killing the cool Halloween vibe by going too early. You're, way I'm to go. making you're the killing, season change. You're killing Halloween. You're killing I'm Halloween. actually getting Halloween the season Halloween is going. all about orange and brown. I'm sick of the humidity. You're a premature the speculator. The 90 degree yep. days. I'm, ha- I'm sick of BO. It's going to happen in, in, in like an instant. It's and, not going to be. Prepared. And then when it's time. But we're prepared. Put the stuff out. This stuff brings me hella joy. We don't so. have anything outside. Brings, uh, Halloween's my favorite holiday. But I think it has to be. It's got to be October. Maybe I'll give you last week of SEP if you're really trying to run up to something. If you're going to do like Tim the Toolman Taylor level Halloween decorations. But man, September 10th, I got to I gotta throw a flag on I you. did not bring everything out. There's still much in the basement. But I did start the process. So my wife was going to put out some of the fall stuff. You know, like just, just the fall stuff. And mm-hmm. I said, are you going to do fall? And then, and then Halloween like towards October. And she goes, you know what, this year I'm just going to do it all at once. Did it all at once, and it, and it kind of works because it's fairly subtle. It's like a mix of the Halloween stuff and the fall stuff. And you know what? It's like a hayride. We're looking for efficiency here. We got enough to do. We got yeah. kids well, going to this sport and that, that sport. It seems to be a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> we can't set aside two days for decorations. It just is a pet peeve. Well, don't come over then. It's a pet peeve. I'm sorry. That's it. And, and it's maybe irrational. I don't think so. Somebody called me a curmudgeon. Go yeah. ask yourself. People are calling you wrong in the chat, and I... I don't care what they <laughs> not say. Not people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's, wrong, maybe though. it's not valid. Okay, fine. That's just me. I can I can understand the twelve foot black cats, inflatable black cats in the front not yard. Not yet. Maybe. Dude, Halloween is October thirty first. It is the last day of October. I just want to be around this stuff, though. I want the I want all my witchy stuff more than normal to You're come out. You're fifty days out. You're fifty plus days out. But for me, the rule is once That's Halloween's a long over, time, yeah. dude. November first, we roll the Christmas stuff out. Yeah, no kidding. So if it's too early, if 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 this is too early for Halloween, what's too early for Christmas? I well, think Christmas uh, is anything life before Thanksgiving. I agree. I agree with that. But December. That's a thirty day run up. So you can't. You're talking out of both sides of your mouth right well, I'm now. I'm more of a Halloween fan ways. than a Christmas fan. Let's just get yeah. that out right. there. Fine. It may be irrational. Same. It may be an irrational pet peeve. Fine. All right. Here are a list of pet peeves. You tell me if they're valid pet peeves or not. Okay. By the nature. When somebody puts their shopping cart next to the cart return but not in it. Of course. It's is, that valid. Valid, is that a valid pet peeve or eh? I valid. rescue carts that and is put valid. them away. I'm that person. Carts in general. Carts. Rescuer. That is a valid pet peeve. In fact, 82% think it's a valid pet peeve. <laughs> it's a new show on A&E. Cart rescue. Dude, it's for real. No, Woody, you know, my old radio partner, has mm-hmm. got a bit called Cart Narcs. And uh, he's got somebody in parking lots pretending to be like a police officer. That's great. And we'll issue somebody a ticket if they don't put their car back. I need to be that re- representative on this show. It's amazing. 
Uh, when you're watching TV and the audio and video are off by a millisecond, pet oh, peeve? Big t- uh, not as much as my husband. My husband gets real freaked oh, out. if it's a millisecond off, you're d- damn right that's a pet peeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather mute it. You want to turn right on red, but the person in front of you is waiting to go straight? Yeah, that's hella annoying. Mm-hmm. And I did say hella. And I should be ashamed. <laughs> it is annoying if there was room for them to be left. That drives me nuts. If there was room for them to like leave room for me to go right, and they've kind of like they've taken both, both spots. lanes. Yeah. If it's oh, that is frustrating. That is a pet. I want to like ram them into the <laughs> intersection. <laughs> so let's can we get that? Can we single that out? I just want to ram them. Yeah. So if I want to, if I'm coming out of my subdivision, I could turn onto 109 left or right. If I want to turn right. And somebody turning left has taken up the right spot. You selfish. (laughs) (laughs) When somebody's driving under the speed limit of the fast lane. Yes. Yes. Get Mm -hmm. out of here. Oh, dude. Valid. There are like certain parts of the state, too, where people have no clue that that's a fast lane. I was, uh, where were we going? Out Highway 30, I think. Um, Not too long ago. Pretty far out. Yo, it's two lanes. This is for passing. This is not. What the hell are you doing over right. here? And it happens too on like 141, like some like non-major thoroughfares that are still highway esque. Do people not know the rules in these areas? People don't know the rules. Are, are you that, uh, people are slow rolling done? all the time. Getting, I had two, on Clark's the other day. I had two people going under the speed limit in both lanes, at, like parallel together. I was about to lose it. Yep, that was going on this morning driving here. I'm like, aren't you guys going to work? Right. Are we out just cruising at this time? It's totally confusing how somebody can drive for any number of time, uh, any number of months, and not realize that that's the standard. Get over. Get when out somebody, of my way. When somebody puts the toilet paper roll on the wrong way, is that a pet peeve? And we go over, right? Over. You're yeah. supposed to go over. Right. Over. Not under. Are you over. a up TP narc? Oh yeah. <laughs> you change it. I'll change it. Oh yeah, I change <laughs> it, but I don't. I will change me. it. It's a pet peeve. Mm. And yeah, maybe I should get over it, but I'm not going to. Thank you for your service. <laughs> I have in, in my basement bathroom the patent for toilet paper hanging above the toilet. <laughs> so there is a right way and a wrong way to... Over is correct. Over is correct. Yeah. The this patent says over. Home. This is a battle in my home. <laughs> Tina's an under. Sleeping with it. My wife man. doesn't care, so she just put it on whatever, how she's holding Willy it. Willy-nilly. Doesn't work. You pull When you pull from under, it rips on its own before you've... Made a decision on how many <laughs> how many squares you want. Yeah, it gets caught up. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. It says so on the patent. It's over, or guess what? It's it's over. over. Yeah. It's over, or get out. No thanks. Uh, no time. Yeah. Pet peeve or not? Uh, when two motorcycles take up two full size parking spots. Eh, you don't want to mess no, with those I guys. Get I get it. It's I will give of, you. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, it is kind of. Wait, what? If a when motorcycle two take... motorcycles, oh, take up two full size parking spots instead of going side by side, yeah. you could. Hey, you mm-hmm. guys came together. I, I think it depends on what spot. city you're well, in. They too. didn't though. No, I think they should get the full the full thing. And you know why? Because people are ridiculous with their doors. And you got a bike. There's more. There's more stuff you're gonna hit. Somebody hits me with their door. You know, they're they're just hitting like paint or whatever. Like there's all sorts of things that are going on on a motorcycle yeah, that I don't I'm, want I'm not anybody that touching. About that one. I'm not that passionate about Here's that Here's a motorcycle peeve I have. And this happened the other night on King's Highway. I, everyone's got, and I, I'm a fan of this. I see people with stickers in their windows. Watch for motorcycles. Don't be a jerk. But then I'm like, but some motorcycle riders are jerks. Oh, yeah. These dudes are like riding wheelies in between oh, yeah. cars down King's Highway on their... Like, in, on the white line, like, riding in between cars, and I'm like, you guys, if you get in a wreck, it's your fault. Right. You deserve to dump that bike. You're acting like a-holes on a public street in the middle of three lanes of traffic on King's Highway, and one guy was, like, blocking me for the others. He would, like, slam on his brakes, and yeah. he was blocking cars so they could ride wheelies in between cars on King's Highway at, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm like, man, if you get, if you dump it, that's on you. That's, That's on not you. not people seeing motorcycles. Like most motorcycle riders, cool. Some a holes. Yeah. 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 Uh, when somebody in front of you at Starbucks has a high maintenance order and takes forever. Pet peeve. Yeah, you kind of know what you're dealing with there. How long does it take to say cream and sugar? Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> also, is it should that be a rule where if you're ordering? 
for maybe more than five people, you shouldn't be in the drive thru You should have to go in. Oh, like a 15 items or less rule for self checkout. Yeah. Do you think so? Because I've always point. noticed that you go to White Castle or something, you see one car, you're like, sweet, it's going to be quick. And then those bag, 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 Great box, case. box, box, bag, 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 bag. And you're right. like, come on, you jerk. Uh, Joe says the only time a toilet paper roll should be acceptable under is if you have a new puppy or, God forbid, a cat, so they don't have to constantly you know, deal with unraveling. Oh, man. Okay. How about you don't let the dog or cat in the bathroom? Uh, good luck to you, Riz. Yeah, well, my dogs don't go in the bathroom because <laughs> I cats, shut the door. My cats, whenever they, Clover, when we first got her that first year and she would want our attention, we'd be lying in bed. She'd go in there and start taking the toilet paper <sighs> down. We'd walk into so your, a flood. I guess your, I guess your bathrooms don't have doors. Huh, crazy. They do, but you got to keep them open. <laughs> crazy, yeah. Okay, just just saying. That's on you. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to play three and five. And the game that's sweeping the nation. So Moon is going to give you a category. You name three things in that category within five seconds. Two out of three categories, right? You win. Your choice of prizes, event sevenfold tickets, used tickets, Queens of the Stone Age tickets, or tickets to go see Three Days Grace with Chevelle. Remember, no ums or ahs to start your answer. Them's the rules. And uh, I believe we should do a practice round first. Okay. All right. Who uh, Who do you want to? <sighs> let's with? go with. Uh, let's go with Learn. All right. All right, Learn. Here we go. Three and five practice round. Here we go. Okay. Name three NFL teams that wear blue. Rams. Colts. Cowboys! Oh! Whoa! Ooh. You're done. It was in the buzz. <laughs> Judge says that no. That was that awesome, was good. good job, though. <laughs> was that like the longest five seconds ever? It really well, was. Like it. I, I think like you it. got the learn 15. Mm. Mm -mm. I'm proud of you, though. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. It was like uh, Matrix when time slows down. Yeah. Also, I wasn't sure that the Colts were a real team. Back yes. to you. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, Rafe, you. There we go. <laughs> Name three... Major League Baseball teams that no longer exist. The Montreal Expos, the St. Louis Browns, and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Today. Kansas wow. City I'm Athletics. I'm impressed, buddy. That was good. I had it. I just couldn't get had it out. It. I felt it. like a slow five seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to the phones. And we've got, uh... oh, hi, Mark. Mark in Wentzville. Hi, Mark. Let's do this. All right, Mark, let's go. Three and five. Okay, Mark, name three movies in theaters right now. Oh, my God. Barbie, Oppenheimer, Ninja Turtles. Oh! We yes, have to win all the tickets. Now we're taking that off the table. <laughs> yeah, we're never now doing we're it never again. doing that question again. Congratulations. <laughs> also, when are Barbie and Oppenheimer going to get out of theaters? Right, yeah, yeah. This is now, we, we, again, uh, we wanted to go see Oppenheimer maybe on Saturday, but, you know, now it's like... Two showings Sporadic, a day. Yeah. You know, not every theater showing it still. All right, Mark, congratulations. One right. Here we go. Name three shoe manufacturers not named Adidas. Nike, Reebok. Uh, uh. Oh, oh, man, uh. you blew it, Mark. <laughs> Dang, Mark. Wow. Oh, bye, Mark. Oh, he's got one he's more. Got one, one, more chance. one more chance. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Welcome back, Mark. Here we go. Last they one. Did not. Name three movies that are considered cult classics. Mm. Oh, come on, man. Uh, Killing ah! it! We just gave you one. We just gave you one. Mm. Barbie? We were quoting The Room. Oh, the Room. Oh, the the room. we were quoting a cult classic. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Oh, what would you Mark. say? Three cult classics. Uh, Boondock Saint, Big Lebowski, and The Room. Okay, way to go, Rafe. Mm. Because okay. I feel like those were, like, not big hits, but became cult classics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chaz, good morning. What's up? Happy birthday, Riz. Thanks, buddy. Let's play. Name three extreme sports. Snowboarding. Skateboarding. Bobsledding. <laughs> Bob Waterboarding. Bobsledding. <laughs> Bobsledding's uh, Bob pretty extreme. Yeah, dude. You ever been in a bobsled? But we're talking, but I mean, there's Have like, you ever been in a bobsled? No, because it's too extreme. I don't think extreme. so, but there's there's a category for, for extreme sports. MMA. You're, you're missing the plot but, here. Uh, Wrestling. Extremely dangerous. What about luge? Hey, Would you give it a yeah. luge? That's crazy. Gator I'm not, wrestling. I'm not the judge. I'm just judges. You guys to listen. Judges. Bobsled's dangerous as f. So I'm. Is it extreme? I didn't ask for dangerous oh. sports. 
Well, is it extreme? <laughs> I feel like it is a sport that we couldn't just walk on. We can't just pay 20 bucks and hop in a bobsled. Right. So I'm going to go, yes, it's, ex it's extreme okay. enough for me. Extreme <laughs> enough for you. Because it is a, because then you get into the luge, like when they go down that thing head first. Well, I know like, oh, that skeleton. Yeah, that's wild. Also, how right. awesome is it that Chaz was like skateboarding? Because Chaz, pick up your effing skateboard. That quote. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Whoa. What's, totally right what's considered extreme sports is like climbing. I wanted him to stay on the boarding and say waterboarding. Mountaineering, yeah. base jumping, uh, paragliding, base skateboarding, jumping. surfing, body bodyboarding, skiing, snowboarding. Yeah, but that's, no that's extreme to the definition of extreme. But that, that's what I'm asking uh, for. Good God, it's a game. Shark with, punching. <laughs> shark punching. <laughs> with parameters. <laughs> Holy crap! Mountain biking. Uh, the judges, the judges the possibilities are endless. Next. All right. Name th uh, three cities that start with the letter B. Can't do it. Can't, can't, it. can't do it. Boston. My first one was Billings. My first one was Bismarck. Billings. Birmingham. Oh, there Boston. are a lot. Brooklyn. There are a lot. I couldn't tell which were cities and which were just street names, so I just didn't say anything. Okay, that's all right, buddy. <laughs> You'll get him next time. <laughs> All right, Chad. Yeah, here yeah. we go. Final one. Final one. <laughs> Name three tech companies. Apple, Google, T-Mobile. 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 Whatever. Uh, is T-Mobile a tech company? 5G, bro. Hey, who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> they got, and they have home Chaz internet. This is awesome. Home internet? 5G, dude? Right. Judges? Uh, yeah, I'm cool. All right, yeah, fine. T and T Mobile is technically mobile. Can I see your guys' credentials? <laughs> yeah, why don't you just? What do you consider a tech company? <laughs> what? What do you? Well, consider it was right a with Apple company? and Google. Meta, and... Apple, Google, T Mobile Amazon. is a wireless phone network, which is a technology. That's not what we're talking about. That's not a tech company. <laughs> they also up, offer home mobile. internet and five G. What is that? What are you talking about? You no 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 like that's not no no no. T-Mobile is, is a brand name. It's a mobile communications it's subsidiary a communications of a company. telecommunications company. It's a communications company. It's not a tech company. They but, didn't invent any sort of tech. Hey, hey, but it was, 5G, hey, excuse me. <laughs> it was Germany's first mobile communication service by radio telephone systems that were owned and operate. Okay, never mind. This um, is yet. something else. Way to go. No, you raised no both way. hands in the air and made no point. That's the word tech for you. <laughs> it's fine. You guys keep, keep judging poorly. Both it's hands in the air. It's did not reinforce the point you were trying to uh, make at all. True. Yeah, I, Hi, take, I take it back. 2014 says T-Mobile is the tech company of the year on Reddit. So Look at this. You, oh, you, well, Reddit So you have a Reddit in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Drew. Hey, guys. All right, Drew, Hi, here we go. Name three things you buy at Office Depot. Paper, staples, and stapler. That's yeah, nice. man. You going to argue that one, Moon? Why Bring it, Moon. are you being <laughs> such a turd? Cause that's my He's job. mad today. We're salty. Me? Yeah, man. You're yelling at me about. Are you out of your mind? I'm just trying to hold the integrity of this Big game Ten. together, and I've been fighting it for years. All right, next. Name three things you put on your head or face. Hat, mask, helmet. Yes, Perfect. you do. Yes, you do. Hat, mask, helmet. <laughs> 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 Things you put on your head or face. Makeup. I mean, that was a great question, Moon. Thanks, man. <laughs> great one. <laughs> See, you thought I was going to go negative. Uh, there. Article didn't. from Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> you trust Bloomberg? T-Mobile surprises as tech winner in tough stock market. But then I went to the link and it doesn't exist. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I clicked on it. Hey, get and it, it said get link it no longer exists. Get it to uh, Josh, hello. Just, just trying to keep you guys out. Hey, what's up? Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. All right, How here we, we go. Going? Name, so far, so good. Name three animals on a farm. Cow, chicken, duck. Okay, yes. Cute. All the things you can find on a farm, yes. Okay, next. <laughs> Name three cities in South America. You got me. Oh, no. We're not good at this. We're not good at geography. We aren't. This is a dip <laughs> in our society. We geography. need to be better, all of us, me included. Okay, next. Name Final three one. things that you see at a music festival. Bands, guitars, amps. Yes. Perfect. Yes, you do. Hang on. Okay. Uh, Rob and Arnold. Hello, Rob. Hey, how's it going? 
Uh, so far, so good. Let's go. Name three TV shows made for children. Blippi, Moana, Sleepless. Perfect. Okay. Moana is not a TV show. No. No, no. it's a movie. No, it's a movie. movie. There's no Moana spinoff? No. I don't think so. No. Sorry. Hang Next. on, Hank. Hold up. Oh, jeez. They're Mo making one, right? Moana TV series. 2000. Let's see. Hang on. Moana. Moana's it's an movie. animated series. It says animated series. Like a series Season of one, episode one. Okay, fine. It it's is. coming uh, out in 2024. <laughs> you, right. He didn't even fight you. Give it to all. <laughs> facts are facts. Good for you, man. All right, Rob. It hasn't next. come out yet, to be Na clear. Name three <laughs> Name three different types of automobile. Uh, oh, oh, you can't. Oh, you yeah. can't. Oh, Rob. You blew that one. All right, final one, Rob. Here we go. Okay, name three bottled water brands. Dasani, Ice Mountain, on. Um... Nope. Oh, boy. Well. I feel like you wanted to nope on that one. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like the we gave him the Moana thing. Well, I thought I got to make up for it. Hey, that guy can predict the future. I mean, he's kind of cool. Universe right at it. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, or a final contestant. You ready to play? Ready, ready, ready. Uh, here we go. Name three TV shows from the 70s. Starsky and Hutch. Uh, Hawaii Five-0. Yeah. Uh, no, oh. no, no. Ran out of time. You were getting there, though. Yeah. Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of them. That aren't. 70s show. <laughs> Chips. Uh, next. Name three things you see in an office. Paper, pencil, pad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, indeed. Okay, final one. Name three current NHL teams. Blues, Bruins, no. Rangers. Oh. Mm. So oh, close. That's, that's I thought she had that. Nah, she didn't, though. <laughs> You're smiling a little bit too big right now. And that's it? Oh. That's too bad. That's, that's too bad. It's more Avenged so Sevenfold tickets for me. <laughs> Speaking uh, of, I have an Avenged uh, Sevenfold ticket blast happening this Friday at Hot Shots Winsville, right 7 on. and 9. All right. Giving away a pair go of tickets every 15 minutes. Uh, maybe Aura could go see you out there and dry her tears mm. yeah. with the Avenged Sevenfold tickets and then go see a show. <laughs> Uh, six time fun facts are next. Um, question before we head into the break. Uh, men, are you uh, are you comfortable putting sunscreen on another man's back? Mm. Thank <laughs> That's a good question, man. That is a real murky water. <laughs> so it's the uh, 22nd anniversary of 911 and um, how do you uh, how do you talk to your kids about 911 if they ask? Yeah, you have to be sensitive to their age. Um, details are scary, especially if it's a young kid. You know, a lot of a lot of schools touch on it, you know, but they, you know, they they talk about it in age appropriate ways. But at home, yeah, you know, how do you talk to your kids about nine eleven? They might have questions. You know, they they watch the news, and you're watching the news, and they see stuff in the background. Mm -hmm. Kids at school talk. <clears throat> so here are some tips from experts on how to talk to your kids about nine eleven. First, gauge how much they already know. Like, your first question should be, what do you know about 9-11? And they may have learned stuff in school or could even have, uh, you know, bad information they got from somewhere else. So, you know, so address that first. Then, as I mentioned, be mindful of their age. You know, if they're young, keep it simple. Don't get too detailed. You know, teens can handle more and might have specific questions. Like, uh, like what was it like living through it? So, so be prepared for that. And then they say you was a, use a lesson plan. The 9-11 uh, the Memorial has, uh, has them broken down for different age groups. You can download them free hmm. at 911memorial.org, 911memorial.org. Encourage them to talk to other people who, who remember, especially if you don't remember much. You know, parents, in the, think about parents in their 30s were right. young kids back then. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of wild. Even just telling them, you know, where you were or how it felt could be valuable. Uh, but feel free to learn... You know, or, or to lean on an aunt, an uncle, or a grandparent, too. Uh, read and watch stories from survivors or, or people who lost loved ones. 
you know, and that's that's more for older kids, you know. But understanding the emotions of 9-11 can be just as important as knowing the facts. You know, sometimes it's hard for kids to understand how big, it, uh, big it, uh, of an event it was mm -hmm. and how many lives it touched. And then maybe plan a trip to a 9-11 to a memorial. There, there are a bunch in the area, like uh, Fenton Heroes Memorial. There's uh, Gateway Greening 9-11 Orchard. There's uh, Narynx Hall's got... 9-11 uh, Memorial, <laughs> Spirit of Freedom 9-11 Memorial uh, at, at Winghaven. Right I on. think that's the one where they actually have pieces of the World Trade Center up there. Really? Wow. So there are a bunch. There are a bunch in our area. You know, a thousand memorials across the U.S. So. Yeah. I know my kid's school just sent something, got an email saying, here's what we're talking about today. Here's how we're talking about it. Do your kids have specific questions for you and your wife because you were there? Uh, no, no. I, you know, it's funny. My kids have never asked. Really? Yeah. Interesting. One day they will, I bet. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, but we, we, we've talked about it. We've talked about our experiences before, so we've told them. You know, your mom and I were together. We were in the city when it happened. You know, and obviously age-appropriate ways, right. ways to talk about it. But It's probably a disconnect, too, of like being, if you weren't alive when it happened, it reads like, a history book text to you. Mm. Like the same way we read about Pearl Harbor. Yeah. We're like, we know what it is. We know what happened. But we were not alive. Even though it's not that ancient of history, mm -hmm. it feels that way to a kid. Where it's probably like, yeah, I don't even know how the pyramids were built either, Dad. You know what I mean? Like, right. in yeah. their mind, mm -hmm. they don't realize how recent it was because they were They're reading it. gleam in your eye. Yeah. yeah. And in the future, they may have questions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll tell them our experiences. So, uh, yeah, 22 years ago today. All right, let's uh, make a right turn and uh, do this. Oh. I had the blinker on. Yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because <laughs> we, good. before we went to commercial break, you're like, all right, you guys rub sunscreen on each other's backs. Then we took like a right turn <laughs> yeah, yeah, to 9-11, well, I mean, and now we're... <laughs> how do you pivot? <laughs> I know. Man. You're a you master pivot? at pivoting. That's good. <laughs> yes, <he is. laughs> um, Which means you're the guy to put sunscreen on someone else's back. That's right. Well, okay, that's a legit pivoting. question. And your sex time fun fact sponsored by... Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet. Do you know a guy who would rather get a nasty sunburn or even risk getting skin cancer just because he doesn't want another guy to put sunscreen on his uh, neck? Every man I know, yeah. Hello, guys. Hello. <laughs> When's the last time a man friend <clears throat> put sunscreen on your backs? The last time I asked him to. Mm-hmm. All right. Which was when? And do you oh, know? Uh, 89. Like, has Johnny <laughs> Venus ever rubbed sunscreen on your back? Like, before a Greek fire <sighs> you know, I, show? I don't have a memory Top of that. Top of the world, baby. But we've known, yeah, we've known each other since 94, 95. So, I mean, it's likely. All right. At some point. Riz? Uh, uh, no, I've, I've never rubbed sunscreen on another man's back. Okay. Am I comfortable doing it? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not comfortable putting sunscreen on anybody's back. That's so weird. I would because be totally as a girl, I'll, I've I've rubbed my husband and any man that needs to be my girlfriends. I'm hey, I put I it on your want ears. Anybody other than my wife rubbing sunscreen on my back? Oh yeah, I don't think it's, it's romantic. weird. What if she's not around? You're just getting burned. Yeah, you're on a you're going to the lake with the boys. boys Come on, Riz. You when you and I were at the lake, we did I've, that. I've never put sunscreen on. <laughs> Your back is just blistered. Yeah, just... so <laughs> cracked back there. Where's my wife? That's a man's back. That's funny. No, I, I honestly have never had another man or put sunscreen on another man's back. Guess what we're doing next summer, guys? Hey, let's do it right now. That's right. I would no, I, nor would I be comfortable with you putting sunscreen on my back. What? Or any other female. I, I don't know. I just don't want people touching me. <laughs> and I don't want to touch other people. You know, I, I'm going to give you a pass. It has nothing to do with sex or you know, man, female. I just don't right. want to do it. Other way around, if we were, if I was like, hey, man, I don't want my back to get burned. You mind just I'm, putting I a couple, you. I'm going to put a couple dollops in your hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah, be gentle. Can you warm them up before you get on my back? Though? And I don't like cold. So can you, oh, can you rub I them don't together? want to do that. I just do my shoulders, man. Don't make this weird. You I, I, you it's already do weird. It. <laughs> you wouldn't do it? No. You've never done it. Yeah. Do it. Just do it. 
You know. I see what you think. He's afraid. Think. He's afraid of loving it. I'm imagining oh, it right that's now. that's what it is. And I'm imagining putting my hands on your back. I have lotion in the office back. right now. I my think we should. glistening shoulder blades. <laughs> we can do this right now. I think now. we should let you rub some lotion into her. As soon as you back. touch me, I go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Don't tickle me. You am better I, not. Am I doing both Both hands or one hand? And you better get it all mixed in. That's really, yeah. your, cho- that's really your choice. Yeah. I'm using the back of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just pure knuckle, man. I feel like one hand makes it feel a little more like you're buffing a car. I think one hand makes it better somehow, because you're just you're like really getting in there. If you're just shimmying up, and if you're doing like circular patterns, like you're waxing a car, if I'm doing two hands, it's almost a massage. Yeah, two hands feels a little more like you're cheering <laughs> me on or something. I don't know. That's funny. I've, I mean, I really have never thought about it. I yeah, mean, yeah, we're getting spray on sunscreen, by the way. Nobody's touching anybody. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> spray on's a little easier because then it's just a you spray it on and maybe give it a quick. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not touching. I'll spray sunscreen on you. All right. Interesting. That's good. That's good enough. I don't want to touch anybody. Yeah, or get be it. touched. Or be touched. I get it. And I got some friends that I probably wouldn't touch. I think I would get I'm freaked serious. out, I, I know honestly. That's not, I know this sounds ridiculous, but if like two friends came up, and I'm picturing them both right now, and they said, hey, man, put this on my back, I go, ah, you're going to... You're gonna have to dry off your back or something first, because I they just got back like, knee. What is it? No, no, just sweaty, just like no. s- sweaty, All sweaty guys, time. sweaty, sweaty guys. I like think I would have pause for the hairy guy. The hairy guy? I'm not a hairy dude. I don't have a hairy back. So if I asked you to do me, there's not gonna be any kind of uh, uh, there's not gonna be any kind of friction or pushback. You're not gonna have to push through a layer yeah. of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are if, a little. If I had a real hairy back, to like. A, Get friend that's like, can you hook me up? And I'm like, it's it's just a, a back <laughs> bush. <laughs> mess. Ooh. Something, a back there's, bush. There's mm. something about that. Like my fingers were combing through their back hair. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle it. Look, even you got a little. Well, I even actually, you went like a little dark. Real, and I've had Harry putting Harry back lathers. What, w- what? Would you mm-hmm. be uncomfortable with, would Tim be uncomfortable with Moon putting lotion on your back? No. With Moon? No, he knows Moon. You guys know each other. Like, he would, no. Would he if it's be some rando with any guy of us putting lotion on your that's back? That's like slowly doing it and being all weird about it, then yes. But no, if somebody, I, I feel like I go into mom my mode. Shoulders. I go into mom mode when I put <laughs> sunscreen on anybody. I always go, I'm, I'm into I'm into pure mom elbow action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would, would Tim be weirded out if we volunteered first? Be like, hey, can I put sunscreen on your back? And he was there. <laughs> you didn't ask. Yeah. You didn't and, ask I did it, and I did it with one <laughs> finger. At this point. Tim, I just one finger. I'm making little bitty circles. You guys are all like yeah. part of my family now because like I talk to you, like fa- I talk about you at home, like family. So like, I think that he's well past that. Like if yeah, if you guys were trying to step in, he'd be like, whatever, man. I don't know if I would be comfortable doing it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I what, a thousand percent would not. I, I mean, su- su- super close friends. Yeah, yeah, one thing. But like, let's say, let's say you're out at a pool or on a beach or something with with a friend that's like not a super close friend, and their wife is like, "Hey, will you rub this on me?" I wouldn't do it. Given a choice, like, oh, though. you know, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable okay. with that. We, we, Given a choice, gun to your head. <laughs> you got to either do Tim, or you got to do learn in front of Tim. Who are you doing? What are you doing? And we're talking sunscreen here, just for anybody tuning in. Just sunscreen. <laughs> Wait. So it's it's learn or Tim. You're like yeah. You, have you to, either have to, yeah, to you either got to lube her up while he's flipping burgers, watching you yeah. do it, or you got to go over there to the grill and you got to you got to get Tim. Oh, uh, knowing, knowing the personalities, I would do Tim in a heartbeat because I think okay. it'd be more enjoyable for all of us. Oh, okay, I, I would all, do Tim. He's got hair on his back, so I'm here I to would do you. Tim. Oh, yeah? no. Woo! Not a lot. And put sunscreen on him. You would. We're back, baby. Um, pivot. So, in a uh, in a poll here, uh, a recent poll asked men and women if they'd be comfortable or uncomfortable. They, they actually put it this way: Would you be uncomfortable in a serious situation? And one of them was applying sunscreen to a same gender friend's back. So, man, man, woman, woman. Man. Forty-two uh, percent of men said that makes them uncomfortable. Technically, they they didn't say they wouldn't do it. Just would be uncomfortable. Yeah. Only ten percent of women were bothered. Um, here are some of the other results from other same gender situations. Um, sharing a bed with a same gendered person. Do it all the time on tour, man. Yeah, yeah fine with it. It was normal. Do, on you got to do what you got to do. Don't bother me at all. 
Doesn't bother me. I've had to. I've had to stack up so much. Being, I think that's being on the road mm -hmm. and being broke. You're just like, amen. Uncomfortable for me? Yes. Really? Uncomfortable? I, I've had to. I mean, I've had. I've done it. Hey, brothers. Didn't bug me. 42% of men feel uncomfortable having to share a bed with a male friend. Only 21% of women agreed with a female friend. Uh, are you uncomfortable at a gay bar? No, definitely not. I'm not. No. I'm not. In fact, a lot of times... I don't know. In, in 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 past experiences, it's been a while, but in past experiences, I was far more comfortable because, like, I I know there's no there's no weirdness, there's no pretense, there's nothing. nothing. A lot of drinks were bought for you. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just I saying, like, I'll take I, another my talk. I feel Thank like you. there's less pretense. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not there, not there to pick anybody up or like find anything. You know, you know yeah. like I'm there, I'm there to just hang. Yeah. Or, or like, or this one place in Chicago, like, I had great chips. They had great food there. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm here for good hanging and, and there's no pressure. There's no, you know, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I like, do know what you're saying. For, for that scenario, I, f I found it more comfortable. Straight Sometimes. women like myself yeah. go to gay bars with other straight women to dance and not be grossed out by anybody to escape coming up us. into our yeah, yeah. yeah. Into and we will body. follow you in. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, like, I mean, didn't work. I'm with you. I, I never went into a bar to pick anybody up. So yeah. therefore Just men are coming in with lotion. <laughs> Get out of here, Riz. I'm saying like a bar in general. Some some bars, burn. especially in different cities where you don't know what bar is representing what or whatever. Yeah. Like you you go in and like as a guy, people think like, oh, he's he's here to pick up chicks or something like that. And and you're like, no, that's not. You know, I don't I don't I don't, I don't even want somebody thinking that. I had an old uh, guy looked like Kenny Rogers asked to see my wiener in a gay bar one time, and I'll be honest, didn't bother me. No, he was good. so polite, it's flattering. He was so sweet and polite in the bathroom that I was like, no thanks. You know what? You made me you. feel seen a little bit. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Felt kind of good. Yeah. Uh, do you remember wants to be uh, Faux Grand? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Place. Across the street was a, uh, was a was a lesbian bar. I think it was called Absolute Absolutely Goosed or something like that. Oh, really? Never been. Goosed. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's still open. Uh, but when there was a wait at Faux Grand, I think the, um, the little buzzer they give you worked across the street at the bar. So you go over there. So you go over there. And I, I remember going in there the first time. I went... <laughs> A lot of women in flannel. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's a lesbian bar. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, what's that? Uncomfortable in any way. I used the to... one gay bar, uh, it's pretty cool. It has the rollerblade rink in it. Which one's that? That's a cool one. You Are you making that up? Yeah, maybe. Damn, I was just God. trying to fit oh, in. I was excited. And, you know, that sounds fun. Have you ever been to a gay bar, Scott? <sighs> Swing on a move. Damn, Scott. Yes, I have. It was uh, over in Australia. There was one by our hotel, and it was a lesbian bar, mm. and it actually worked out pretty neat because the one of the band's tour manager was this pretty oh, yeah. gal, and uh, she this one lady was so mean and aggressive to her, uh -huh. trying to win her over, and uh, so she just pretended that I was her boyfriend. So it was a fun night. Mm. Okay, I had a fake girlfriend all night. It was great. Cool man. Yeah. Yeah, I had a blast when I lived in Carbondale. The there was like a drag show every Sunday night at Club Traz in Carbondale, if you remember that place. And then I would, all the drag queens would come in and I'd wait on them at the bar I worked at, but we would close at like 11. Right. The great, super fun group. Yep. Great tippers. And I'd go over there and watch, and just what a fun night. Oh my gosh, yeah. Just a super fun environment to be in. It's, they're partying. Hmm. San I, Francisco. I'm here for it. Ever go to San Francisco, just there's an entire like LGBTQ plus like district drag shows, every type of bar, and it's a freaking blast. Yeah. 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 And the question was, does it make you uncomfortable? No. Doesn't make him uncomfortable. Nah. Um, the phrase uh, dad bod mm. was yeah, coined feel? was coined to label the untoned physique of a man. It's a compliment, right? Dad bod. Mm. Uh, well, uh, how do you feel? I don't know. I'm asking the dads in the room. I'm not sure how that's, that's how it started. I don't know. Oh. It's a compliment. I thought it, it became was. a fetish. Like, that's why everyone said all the. Uh, it'd be yeah, like. That's just the pendulum. It was always like hot girls on TikTok saying they were down for dad bods, but then you look at their Instagram and they're dating like a guy that looks like yeah. a gym model. And I'm like, well, who. You're it's not nice that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just looking for the audience. It's like saying I like the funny guy. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah that I don't was, think as long that, as he's also hot. That was the hashtag pendulum. That was just the pendulum that swung back in, in yeah. the favor of dad bots. But I, I, I dad bot is a... I think the reference is like, and the reason dads are thrown into it is because, okay, now we're at a point where we're not taking care of ourselves. We're taking care of others. And therefore, put a few extra pounds and don't care about it. Hmm. Dad bot. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, got, I mean, yeah, that's what's going you don't on have with the, me. You don't, you don't have the time to take care of yourself no more. <laughs> Caring yeah. for others. In, in that way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It could be a derogatory thing. For sure. But, I mean, I think that's what that's what it, that's why it got the name. But according to Match.com's Singles in America survey, so pictures of men showing off their bodies on Instagram turned off 45% of women. Hmm. And 34% of women aren't into guys who post pictures of themselves at a gym. So according to the study, 53% of <laughs> single women and 44% of single men have posted at least one selfie in the last year, 61% of men and 67% of women posted a photo to capture a moment. 42% of men and 40% of women did it to show off where they are and what they're doing. And 19% of men and 38% of women wanted to or um, wanted to document a good hair day or an outfit. So they said, looking, women are looking really for personality. And they just don't need a perfect body to go with it. Hmm. Let's say you're at the beach, though, and a dad bod walks up to you or, like, a really toned, tanned, fit bod walks up, and they're both really cool and nice. Which one is... They're going for the toned guy? Yes. Yeah, they're yeah. going for the toned yeah. guy. So um, what are women's opinions of the dad bod? Uh, I don't know. If I, this is very high. 70% of women said they're fans of the dad bod. I'm looking up dad bod on Instagram hashtags right now, just in like looking at all sorts of rando photos. It'll take I mean, you directly to my page. <laughs> Rafe is number one. Uh, it's all kinds of different shapes of bodies of dudes. Like, I mean, there's like beer guts to rip dabs to pecs to boobs, man boobs, like a little bit of everything. 49% so of people believe men with dad bods have happier relationships and marriages because they're spending time with their family, not at mm -hmm. the gym. Yeah, man. Yep. And they don't have a lot of options to cheat. <laughs> wow. <there>. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. Good point. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. They're locked in. No wife's watching the dad bod walk out the door and being like, oh, nobody hops on him at the grocery store. Chris <laughs> says dad bod is as much as a compliment as pointing out a woman's muffin top. <laughs> Could be. I was thinking if we could get away with calling someone. If I said... Oh, love her. She's got a killer mom bod. If I wouldn't be burned at the stake. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if yeah. you flip the script on that, it feels yeah, like Lauren, it would... what would you think about that? If, if somebody said, hey, you got a really cool mom bod? Yeah. I mean, I'm probably in that phase right now of my mom bodness. Would you look at it as a compliment? Well, if they're saying, like, oh, my God, girl, you got it going on. You got a cool, kick-ass mom bod that I'm like, hell well, you yeah. Get a lot, you put a lot of adjectives in front of yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, you just said mom bod. Well, how are they saying it? Yeah. Are, are you mom saying if I can, nice mom if bod? I went back, got the mom bod if, going. Yeah. It depends if, on the tone. If some gal, went by, uh, some gal went by and I said, man, she's really built like a mother. Like, wow, she's really built she's like a mom. She's got those big old hips. You, you think that's positive in any way? You think no, that's going to come not. back on me in any good way? How you say it. How you say it. It's yeah. literally in how you say it. If somebody's in any to, way. If being a jerk and saying, like, she's got a mom bod. I, yeah, I would take offense to that. But if they're like, yeah, she's got a mom bod. I'd be like, what's up? It's yeah. literally in how you're saying it. Nobody's saying it that way. Like, if I said, <laughs> you got a hot-ass dad bod. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> Not lying. All I'm right. Lying. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right, let's take a break, and we'll come back. and we'll, mom bod. We'll talk about the sex toy of the week. <laughs> I think... Uh, as far, I think you guys want us to. You want to take it derogatorily, like because I think dad bod is derogatory. Okay, it's, so you're taking offense to that. It's not. A I think it started it, derogatory, it, and it men are be. so self delusional. We made it a compliment. Yeah, I don't know where it started. We're like, yeah, gotta rock your dad bod, dude. Whatever, whatever makes, makes us not what feel you better. Huh? It's, it's, whatever yeah. makes us feel better. It's like yeah. an average forty something year old guy that's. Not in the gym. It's there's, there's no compliments there. Yeah. Well, Dave, <laughs> David Beckham, he has kids, right? Yeah. Kinda, I have his body, body, man. It's like the same. I like my dad. Uh, listen, body. this this next thing we're going to talk about, both moms and dads could get behind. Ooh. Regardless of body type, it's something for everyone. All right, let's do the sex toy of the week. Mm. 
Oh, and we got a doozy today. Do we ever? All right, Rafe, what do, do we got? We ever. This uh, was very special. On this very special day, I wanted something that would reflect the gravity. So I chose the ball crusher. I know. <laughs> Simple, elegant, not over the top in the naming. It is what it is, and it does what it says. Did you see this thing? The ball crusher is $33.95 and has 4.7 stars and 31 reviews. You showed me this this morning. You remember that? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. It's a cool look on you. Couldn't believe it. I, well, I showed my own, yeah. <laughs> Slap it on, crank it down, and crush those balls. That's our catchphrase. <laughs> Give your balls a good compression with this stainless steel ball crusher piece. For those that love CBT, this is simple and effective as a device. Not CBD. The ball well, model CBT. in this photo is just exquisite. Let's see. I mean, that is perfectly a sphere. Very round. Back to you. Huh. Yeah. Well, that's because it's clamped. Yeah. They are being destroyed. Destroyed in this. <laughs> they, are, they, are, they are being crushed. Yes. <laughs> they are not normally that, that, that shape. Size and shape is a result of the crushing. <laughs> it is a product doing what it says and saying what it does. Just simply turn the screw mechanism counterclockwise to make the bar move inward, applying deep pressure against the balls. When you're ready to release them, just reverse the direction of the screw. The crusher is 4.5 inches high and 4 inches wide with an inner opening of 2.75 inches by 2.75 inches. Ice and square. I was at Home Depot this weekend, and I feel like I saw this you could fashion in one of one the one. aisles. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, you could probably build one you yourself. Build one. This might be something you want to outsource for safety, though. The closure clamps down all the way to zero movement. The wow. ring at the bottom can also be used to attach additional weights for more sensation weights sold separately. And wait till you hear some of the rave reviews. Yes. First review. I've been into CBT for quite a long time and over the years have had my balls and stick worked in many different ways. <laughs> this is, however, the most effective ball compressor I have ever experienced. Congratulations. That's Congrats. awesome, Congrats. Lot. He's been on a surge, on a quest. When my companion came home with this and tried it on me, I almost could not take the squeeze. I howled like a mountain lion, even though my balls have been mostly crushed over the years by years and years of BCT. Hey, he, my male mate, has now started to clamp my dome and compress it as well. <laughs> Gosh, I guess it would be totally crushed when this is over. Five stars. CBT lover, G. That's, That's cool, good man. starting. That's where we're starting. That's awesome. Second review. Very painful device, but unbelievable. For fun, I suggest you tighten the screw very slowly to get an intense, prolonged pain and to avoid finishing too fast. Because it hurts so much, I suggest you be gagged because the screams of pain are very loud. Wow. <laughs> Furthermore. <laughs> we need a man yelling. Tell me all about it. Furthermore, the simultaneous <laughs> use of a backdoor plug is the maximum excitement recommended for CBT. Five stars, anonymous. Hmm. Okay. All right, moving on. Got a couple more quick ones. This first one, this next one. This is a great tool to use to crush your balls slowly. It does take a little practice to use to keep the testicle from sliding from one side to the other as you turn the screw. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, man. It's hard to read. For me, I can only crush one at a time, as my nuts are too big to do both. <laughs> Humble brag. I put quarter-inch markings on the sides of the shaft to see how close I get to crushing and splitting my nuts. Oh, God. Good Lord. I can monitor the effects better since I marked it. Really love using it. Looking forward to banding my nut and then applying the ball crusher to see just how far I can go. Five stars. Jim C. Yeah, Jim. Right. And, uh, yeah, good job, Jim. <laughs> and I don't want to give just, listen, I do the research on these. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just give the five-star reviews. This got 4.7 for a reason. There right. was one unhappy customer. And I'll give you theirs. Not fun to use as you turn the wing nut. It pinches your ball sack. Wing nut. <laughs> and not in a pleasurable way. Not worth the money in my book, One Star King Scott. That's really... <laughs> 
It's not my favorite one, man. What a coincidence. Yeah. You've had better. Not my favorite one. <laughs> You've had better. I like the ones that don't hurt. All right, there you go. That's the uh, Ball Crusher, the sex toy of the week. Thirty-three ninety-five, four point seven stars. Well, what a I, deal. I was trying to look up to see what type of screw that was because I'm very. I wanted to know the actual. It was, it's an eye bolt screw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did see that at Home Depot. This one week, eye? And I just yeah, wanted yeah. to confirm. You said one eye. Yes, just one eye. Thank you. Oh, Tim's birthday was last week. It was. <laughs> I sent him a text and I go, did we see this at Home Depot? He hasn't responded. Yeah, I think last time we had uh, Paulo in studio, uh, he was talking about the great Mexican food on Cherokee Street. Mm -hmm. Are there a lot of great like Mexican spots down there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's on my bucket list to go eat oh, yeah. down there with him. That's right. Any specific places you want to go to with him? Well, I want him to pick. Okay. And I wanted to pick the food. I, I don't want to... Because if I get my go-to stuff, it may not be too exciting, but I want to have something authentic. See, I wonder if there's any food down there worth going to jail for. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those chips are definitely worth it. <laughs> because somebody's going to jail. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Polo. Uh, not Polo. Oh, guys, okay. although I don't know the guy's names, I, it may be Polo. A <laughs> uh, guy's in custody after stealing a taco from, uh, from a restaurant employee's hand and then uh, waving a gun around on Friday. So according to police, around 5.30 p.m., Friday, uh, an employee of Lily's Panaderia on Cherokee Street was cooking tacos with an outdoor grill in front of the restaurant when this guy came up, took the taco the employee was making for the customer. The suspect who had the gun went, this is mine. Oh. In the article from Cambo V, it says the, the suspect indicated that the taco was his and took a black gun from his waistband and just started waving it around. Whoa. And then left without paying. Didn't this happen at Cinco de Mayo down there as well? Like the Cinco de Mayo festival? That there was, a, I believe it was a, a pair of people, a woman and a man who came down and same kind of thing. Like waving a gun around. Stealing you know tacos? Not stealing tacos. This was, I don't remember what, I think it was a robbery of, a, of money. Oh, this is a guy, week. one taco. Just one taco. One taco. <laughs> Took a gun out, waved it around. That's my taco. <laughs> Did he get to eat it before he went to jail? <laughs> Well, the guy left without paying. Moments later, the employee saw the suspect nearby, called the police. I'm assuming he did eat it. Okay. That's my taco. That's my taco. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. This, I'm making this for a customer. No, that's my taco. <laughs> and I'll prove it. I believe this is my taco. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's your taco. Yep. Take Go it. Go and take it. <laughs> well, this Lily's place must be awesome. Yeah, 4.9 uh, stars out of five. 4.9? Whoa! Whoa, that's, Whoa! That's really good. That's that's great. Yeah, and I want to say this is a place that they have like a mobile uh, bakery. Because I'm seeing a lot of baked goods on their Yelp right now. Um, and at the Maplewood Schlafly Farmer's Market, I, I believe this is the place that has like a little uh, tent set up and they sell their baked goods. What's a panaderia? It's a bakery. Oh, okay. All this guy was doing, just making tacos outside, trying to make people happy. And this a-hole with the gun. That's my mm -hmm. taco. And they, they, the police figured out the gun was a BB gun. Oh. But it doesn't matter. You know, a gun looks yeah. like a gun. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's willing to go to jail for one of their tacos, it must be good. 4.9 out of 5 stars? The baked goods yep. are something else. I, wow. I've, I've definitely had these. Do they say goods. they serve tacos there? Taco I see tacos. Robbery. What kind of tacos? Worth robbing? Um, what kind of tacos? Like a normal, like a normal they got taco. Street. Well, I mean, there's. You mean they like got the soft menu? rolled. No, I mean, we, I'm, I'm sure there's street tacos, but like beef. Yeah, they got chicken, barbacoa. Yeah, they got it all. Fish taco. They must be good. I don't love fish tacos. I'll be honest with you. Perhaps addictive. Really? Dude, they have to be done right. Yeah. You don't like fish tacos right. because 90% of people trying them are screwing them up. For yeah, everybody. I agree. They have enchiladas. Everybody, like, some of these places go, oh, they, they do fish tacos, so we'll do it. Well, how do you do that? I just throw fish in a taco. No. Nope. Wrong. Uh-uh. I've had good fish tacos, like what, like a, like a slaw. There's, yeah, yeah, there's all sorts of like balance. That. They, they got to like find a balance. You don't just replace barbacoa with some random-ass flaky fish yeah. and call it a fish taco. That's you're, yeah, Get that out of here. You're ruining get it out of here. Look at these baked goods. I mean, it's like authentic, like, Mexican baked goods. You know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Oh, it looks good. I don't know what that is, but It's almost I like it. a, you know those cherry pies, those apple pies you can get from Hostess? Mm. Like a hand pie? Hand pie. Oh, I love it looks like hand pie. That's <laughs> what this looks like, only it's a triangle. Triangle Find hand pie? Yes. I'll tell you what, we did the, um, we were somewhere in Mexico, like, 
kind of deep out on one of those excursions, and there was just like uh, st street folks um, selling like handmade candies. Couldn't tell you what it was, but it was all fantastic. It was good. Yeah, it was incredible. Like a, a lot of fruit-based stuff and uh, different mashed and and um, almost like they, they weren't like jellies, but I, I don't know what they were. It was like it was like a like a thick fruit roll-uppy bar. Hmm. And it just had nuts and fruit and different stuff in it. But whatever it was, it was just yeah. perfect. Awesome. Yeah. I'm down. Couldn't tell you what Well, I'm going to have to go to this place. Yeah. If their tacos are that good. Authentic Mexican Wait, If you go, will good. you bring some baked goods back yeah. with you? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's do sports. All right, Moon. What do you got? Sports presented by DraftKings, a casino queen. Think you know football? Bet on it at DraftKings, a casino queen sportbook. St. Louis City SC earned a point on the road. 2-2 draw against LA Galaxy in LA. St. Louis came out flying. Sam Adeneron scoring the opener four minutes into the game. Then Zhao Klaus, who's back from injury, doubled City SC's lead in the 28th minute. Uh, and then they gave it all away in the second half. Cool. Got to gotta hold that together, though, guys. Get a two-goal lead at the half. Got to hold it, for goodness oh, sake. It. It's okay. Uh, the Reds unloaded six extra base hits, including three home runs, to get a 7-1 victory and avoid a sweep at Great American Ballpark over the Cardinals. Two of the home runs and five of the extra base hits came against Cardinals starter Miles Michaelis. He allowed at least three runs for the sixth, uh, sixth consecutive start. Cardinals have allowed 17 home runs in six games on the road trip. I'll be at the uh, the Battle of Bush on uh, Sunday. Tight. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Brownies up at the... <laughs> Yeah, but, oh, they're so good. but did we find out that right they on. got rid of them? Or no, they just remember, there? They, they had them last time I was there. Oh, oh okay, yeah, okay. I'm going to be doing some recon. Uh, cards play Baltimore tonight on the East Coast with a local start of 535. Coco Goff uh, conquered Queens, New York during her U.S. Open women's final victory on Saturday, not long after she channeled her inner Jay-Z to celebrate the 19-year-old defeated uh, Sabalenka 2-6-6-3-6-2 to seal her first Grand Slam title in front of... The crowd at Arthur Ashe Stadium, hours after winning, she posted a photo on Twitter uh, kissing the trophy and put some Jay-Z um, Empire, Empire State of Mind um, lyrics up there. She is the youngest American since the turn of the century to win the U.S. Open. Serena Williams did it in 99. She was the last U.S. player younger than Goff to win the home major. Very cool for her. Good for her. Uh, I'm Moon, that's your sports because doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it, working it. Let's talk about the NFL pick em. We uh, covered it this morning. On the fast lane, Stalter, Rivers, and BT all had 10 wins. Kerry Davis followed it with 9, and Marsh is at 8. Now, they all have the Bills except for Marsh. He has the Jets. That gives him 47 total going into Monday Night Football. King Scott leads the team here, yeah, baby, yeah. with 10. Yeah, no, Good no. Work. Followed by Riz and Learn tied at 9. Way to go. High five. High five. I follow that up fourth place, 8, and Rafe's currently last with 7. Now, we all had the Bills, but we've gone a little bit. No, we all had the Jets originally. We all had the Jets. We all picked the Jets originally. They're the team. We shall change history and we all have the Jets. All have the Jets originally. Go Aaron Rodgers. Mm. We're all, you know, team Team Jets. Ayahuasca. Team uh, yep. Ayahuasca. Team uh, Yeah, he's that's on a good oh, name. Uh, oh yeah, what's his name? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. He's yes, a quarterback he, for the Jets. Of course he's he is. so high. He's he he on mushrooms right? the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> he's microdosing. So we've all picked the Jets for tonight and right. uh, we'll see what happens. That's uh, right. Come tomorrow morning. Yeah, I skate will, boys. I will, uh, I will get up at 2.30, and the first thing I'll do is check the score. Yes. And uh, thanks to Rafe Williams, you'll be taking one shot in the tush tomorrow. Well, Thank we'll you, see. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate hey, do, your sacrifice. Do what you got to yes, do, man. Kind. We'll see. For real, though. Do what you got to do. All is fair in football and real show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Moon. Appreciate uh, the sports update. You're welcome, Riz. Uh, I appreciate it. Everything I do, me. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> all right, well, uh, we'll take one final break. We'll come back and wrap her up. All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango is next. I appreciate you all tuning in. Had a uh, had a fun Monday. A lot of spirited discussions. Yes. A lot of laughs. Today's Pappy's Recapping. Brought to you by Pappy Smokehouse. Celebrating 15 years. Locally owned but world famous. Two locations including Highway 70 and Mid Rivers Mall Drive in St. Peter's. Everything we covered on the show today. Crap on celebrities. 
uh, your porno birthday, your sports, your everything, including sexy time. Fun facts, a man was arrested after stealing a taco from a South City restaurant. Uh, we have 42% of men are uncomfortable putting sunscreen on another's back. Another man's back, but everybody in this room loves it, right, Riz? Yeah. You gonna oil me up hey, later? Calm down. I'm gonna oil you up later. All right. One hundred five seven thepoint dot com slash Riz. Today the title is okay. It's your taco. Okay. Well, also today's sex toy was a doozy. Yes. Uh, the ball crusher. Yikes. Mm. Yikes. Big yikes. Uh, <laughs> all right. Tomorrow. Oh, we're gonna take a new game out for a spin. It's uh, it's uh, a creation of Learn. Yeah. It's called Who's Who. Okay. Loser. Find those prizes tomorrow. One in five chance. And uh, we'll see how this uh, Monday Night Football game. Uh, it's going our way. Go Jets. So. See how that all shakes out tomorrow morning. Eyes on you, Rafe. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see if I'm a preservationist or or a communal giver. Oh. All right, well, <laughs> eyes on you, Rafe. All right. Anything else? That's it. Yeah. Oh, you know what? No. Uh, so this Friday, we're doing a, an event sevenfold ticket blast, giving yeah. away a pair of tickets every 15 minutes. That's happening <clears> from <throat> 7 to 9 at Hot Shots in Wentzville. I'll be out there. And then Saturday at high noon, the Teenage Dirtbags and Alabama Dirtbags are bringing the finest alternative music mm. out to uh, Oxfest. Oxfest. That's in Washington. In Washington, Washington, Missouri. It's going to be a beautiful day, and we're, we're kicking off the music. A whole bunch of bands and kids get in for free. Uh, it's a big uh, charity event as well. All the all the uh, proceeds go to some uh, some great things happening in the community here. Oxfest in Washington, and again, the Dirt Bags take the stage for your favorite y'all alternative at noon, high noon. All right, we'll see you there. For we'll high all be noon. there. All right, anything else? No. Moving on, Donnie's uh, chomping at the bit here. Go buy tickets to my comedy show. It's a couple weeks out. I'm trying to pack it out, so it would mean a lot to me. Oh, April, end of September. Or, April, September 28th through 30th. <laughs> All right, we'll leave you with a selection from our Team Riz member of the day brought to you by Hot Shots. Proud sponsor, Team Riz. Visit hotshotsnet.com slash Team Riz. From Belleville.